Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Curse of Strahd Twice Bitten, the show where a team of DMs teams up to tackle a 100% rules as written exploration of D&D's most classic gothic horror campaign. I am Dragna Carter, your host and DM, and a big thank you to everyone for continuing to tune in, uh, as well as a big shout out to everyone who has been supporting us on Reddit, on Twitter, uh, as well as everyone who uh, subscribed to the channel last week when we officially opened. We appreciate the hell out of you guys, and you are all awesome. Oh, uh, oh yes. Yay. Yep. We love you guys, and uh, we would not be able to make this show half as great without you all, your all support, so we appreciate you guys, and we love you. So, um, a quick note before we get started, just a brief content warning since we have not done this already, but, you know, Curse of Strahd is the kind of adventure that does uh, somewhat require it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Curse of Strahd, it can be a pretty dark and horrific module. Um, I mean, it is in the horror genre, but just uh, beyond a few specific, you know, elements. Uh, just a quick content warning to those who might be triggered by any number of these elements. Uh, this campaign, as written, does contain elements of suicide, of domestic abuse or child abuse, uh, racism, alcoholism, and a number of other difficult topics. Uh, I will be doing my best to present those elements as tastefully as possible. Um, and someone asked at one point if I would be incorporating some of the uh, uh, more reasonable changes made in the new Curse of Strahd revamp product, uh, especially as it regards to the Vistani. I will, I do plan to do so, so that you know everyone can enjoy as inclusive and enjoyable an experience as possible. But we did want to make sure that everyone who might not be as informed on those elements, uh, you know, did have a heads up, so that everyone can be as comfortable and welcomed into the stream as possible. Uh, so. I think that's everything I had. Uh, we'll probably have some more announcements later. But for now, I think we're ready to go. So let's get started with Curse of Strahd, Twice Bitten. A striking elven female with an almost ritualized poise, Kiva Cyrilai always endeavors to be a level-headed mediator and a soothing presence in the lives of all she meets. Determined to look ever forward, she relies on controlling day-to-day -day chaos. Anyone who watches her for long enough, however, can clearly see there's something undeniably feral and unpredictable bubbling under the surface. In the company of these fine strangers, he is just Metreon. But across the Sword Coast, he's known as Metreon the Magnificent. He is a tiefling whose body and dress carry the signatures of a nomadic performer, as evidenced by the rougher edges of his costume and his sinewy frame covered in faded tattoos. Though he may not look like a typical magician, rest assured, he cleans up quite handsomely. The well-dressed, well-spoken half-elf who introduced herself as Lilisen has stayed away from the rest of the traveling group during the journey so far. Oh, she's friendly enough if someone strikes up a conversation with her. Charming, even. But left to her own devices, she invariably keeps to herself, and even looks nervous when anyone comes within ten feet of her. Amity. 
A terrifying deviloid with a tail that will knock your drink over if she gets too excited. Even worse, some pig follows her around and eats almost as much as she does. Yet, she's generous and easy to befriend, especially if you get her talking about her book of fables. Just, if she compares you to a fox, it's hard to tell if that's a compliment. Erythrindir is a high elf man who looks perpetually like he's never quite gotten enough sleep. After his departure from elven society, he found himself out in the wilderness, working as a ranger in the deep, deep woods. However, this did little to quell his passion for history, and he's found himself on the road to Neverwinter, hoping to track down a book that might hold the answer to a question he's held for a long, long time. All right, and welcome back, everyone. And so, without any further ado, let's dive right in. So, last we left off on Curse of Strahd, Twice Bitten. At the direction of the spirit of Rosevalda Durst, and with Metreon and Lillison now possessed by the ghosts of Thorn and Rose, a group of travelers descended a hidden staircase to the dark depths of the Durst Manor. There, they vowed to find the monster that lay below, and so win their freedom and escape from the terrifying house. As the group explored the dungeon, they uncovered new evidence of the cult's vile and profane activities, including the remnants of potentially cannibalistic feasts and an ominous, omnipresent chanting. Their exploration soon yielded unpleasant results, with Kiva falling victim to a hidden pit trap and Erthrandir's healing magic backfiring, causing her agonizing pain even as the wound was healed. As tensions and mistrust boiled, the group de defended them from a, themselves from a horde of hungry ghouls before resting, retreating, bloodied and bruised near the cultists' living quarters. Their health and vitality to an extent restored. The characters followed the source of the chanting to a lower level of the dungeon, which they found to be full of gruesome artifacts and a ghastly prison. Through the use of a secret door that they uncovered, our travelers gained access to a flooded, mist-filled room and the altar that lay within. As Kiva leapt to the dais and prepared to investigate, the chant stopped and something far more sinister took its place. And so, as you watch and listen, the room around you is now filled with deep, twisted chants, the ledges occupied entirely by 13 dark apparitions that resemble black-robed figures. They hold torches that burn black, light vanishing around their flames, and from what you can see of their faces, they are nothing more than empty voids. Those same voids stare toward the central altar where Kiva now stands, and they speak. One must die, they chant over and over, their hollow gazes fixated on Kiva. One must die. One must die. What do you do? Well, Amity absolutely immediately just whacks this one with her tail. The tail flies right through it as if it's not even there. You see a blur of shadows briefly f fade away and disperse before reforming once more into this dark hooded silhouette. It doesn't even take notice of you. Its gaze fixated entirely on Kiva at the center of the altar. Oh, then she staggers backward and falls into the water. Do Everybody, you... weapons! And Erythrindir is scrabbling for his knife. I... DM, are these on the same level as us? They are. You have two, one on either side of you right now. All right. In that case, Erythrindir, still kind of too panicked to realize what Amity did, is going to do the same thing, pull his pocket knife out, and see if he can take a, string, a swing right into the cowl of this hooded bastard. It swipes through, and it actually carves through the hood. As if nothing's there, you feel almost nothing more than a cold tinge to the air. Whatever this shadow is, it's not capable of being harmed by your weapons. What, what, the, fuck is, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. 
I, Aunt Kiva, you all right? She's sort of frozen in fear on the platform. She's staying there, but she's sort of looking around at all of the creatures and what what do they mean? One must die. What what is this? I don't know. I don't get any. None of this makes sense. Just to it, stay calm. It doesn't look like we can hurt them. I or at least not with like, magic weapons or fancy swords or I don't know. Kiva, get, get get down off the platform. I, and don't uh, maybe not. Don't get in the water. I uh. Kiva's going to turn around. There's the three creatures on her right side, and she's going to try to talk to it. What do you mean, one must die? What? What is this supposed to be? Some sort of sacrifice? What are you talking about? You sw- swipe your gaze toward them and try to gaze into their empty hoods, searching terribly for some sort of meaning. Make an insight check for me, or religion, your choice. Oh God, I'm bad at all of those. Let's try religion. That is a... I can't see it. It was the blind GM roll. So sorry. All good. I will take a look. It was a 17. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. You're good. So, you get the sense that they desire some sort of death, clearly. But from what death, you pause for a moment, your eyes glancing over the altar, seeing the depictions and the ancient bloodstains there, and you realize they want death. They want a creature's death, and it must be done in a way that pleases them. Something must die on that altar. At least that's what they are asking. That's what they're demanding. And this the twisted sinking feeling at your gut, they get the feeling that that's what they desire right now, whatever and whoever they are above all else. If something dies here, do we leave? That's nonsense. They. You think that's what keeping us in? It's just, just get out of there. Like, they can't hurt us. They're not hurting us. You, you can't hurt them. Let's just get the fuck out of there. I, I don't trust the water, Metreon. I, I agree, but I don't think she should just wade through that. Just fucking let's jump just, over let's it. Let's think for a moment. I'm thinking. Get the fuck out of there. Lilithan is going to turn and very cautiously try to touch one of the shadow creatures next to her, just to see if she can actually, like, you know, touch any of it. Oh no! You feel a strange kind of chill as your fingers pass through, but you don't actually make contact with anything physical. You can actually see that they seem to be very slightly ethereal, just barely translucent enough to see through to the other side. But there's not the bone-chilling cold that you've heard. Uh, more manifest ghosts have. You're not sure the nature of the apparitions, but they do seem to be non-corporeal. Eva, is there any is there any like mist in here? Is it is it coming from something? Does she see any mist coming from here? You can see small remnants of the mist that kind of still linger on the steps of the dais, but the outpouring of mist you can still see is slightly clouding around the altar, more and more spilling from it every second but it doesn't seem to be overflowing. It just seems to be a steady stream of misted fog that spills down to the water before rolling over its surface and vanishing. It seems like the mist is is on the water and it's not, it's coming from this altar, but I don't know where it's going. Uh, wait, didn't, didn't they, see, you feel something? Didn't someone feel something in the water? Yeah, yeah. I thought they, a fish or, or something. Oh, a yeah. fish, a fish. So, so looking at these markings, if something has to die, maybe it can be one of those things. Can can we find a, a fish or, or a, a bug? I don't know. Like, something living has to die. It can be something innocuous. Deer gives a quick look at Amity, then at Truffle, and then looks away and then starts scrabbling in his pack. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Give me a second. Uh, these are not exactly ideal circumstances. Wait, it- just wait, just one moment. Why are we believing them? These are illusions. They could just be a memory of what has happened before. Then... Then how else do you propose we get out? The mist is here, and the only other place it's been has been keeping us from getting out. That means that the two are probably connected. If the mist is coming from the altar, maybe we just have to break it? I... With with what? A sledgehammer? That'd take days. 
Oh, Kiva wait. has the meat cleaver from the kitchen in her backpack. Can she tr can she try hearing Amity say that to try to like break the altar with it? Well, the altar itself looks like fairly hardy stone. You think that it probably wouldn't be harmed by a meat cleaver or even with you know anything less than a sustained effort to demolish it. Does it look like it could be pushed off the altar, the the dais itself? No, it seems to be part of the dais, forged from the same stone, or at least mortared into place. Amity dear, I don't think that's possible. Can Lilithin jump across the water and land uh, on the dais? On the dais. What's your strength modifier, or what's your strength score? Uh, my strength is ten. Ten. Um. You can do it, but I think you would need to get a running jump first, or a running start. Yeah. Can I can I look through the water? I know it's dark, but I, I do have dark vision. Is it possible to look through the water to see if there's any of those like fish or any other kind of like rat or animal that's maybe floating in the water? Make a perception check. Uh, given that you're probably looking in the area where Aetherndeer's light is illuminating, uh, this doesn't have to be with disadvantage. Uh, no, five. <laughs> it's dark and murky. There's no sign of anything beneath the water. Just, just, we don't have to stay here. We could just go. We could just go. I, go where? I don't fucking know. Well, we kind of need to fucking know, I'm sorry to say. Cause this is, it, nothing is, is, is happening. We're just stuck here. Yeah, no, I... Yeah. And After these fucking everything... chanting won't fucking stop. After everything we've seen, do you really think they're going to let us walk out of here? Only one way to try, right? Fuck it, right? Uh, I mean, I guess they do seem to be incorporeal, but I still, uh, I, I don't think if we, even if we leave, where are we going? Like, I'd, you know, just a slow death by starvation or by more of the crawling undead in there. I don't- I'm- I'm not gonna die like that. I refuse. I'm not gonna watch anybody die like that. Well, there's Keep... only uh, one other option right now. What's that? What they're telling us to fucking do. How do you even know it will work? I don't know, that's the whole fucking point. So we're going to kill something, just to test out a theory. We either do something or we don't do fucking nothing. Yeah, can yeah. Kiva can Kiva take some of the food that's in her bag and dip it in the water and try to see if it draws out a creature who might be hungry? Like she's gonna take some jerky and stuff and just like wave it around the water and see if it acts as bait. Uh, sure. You kind of take out some jerky and you know without entirely leaving the dais, kind of dip down to the water, anxiously waving it around, hoping for something to bite. There's nothing. Fuck! And she throws it into the water. Lilithan is going to look to her left where Kiva had previously uh, done a running running jump up to the dais. Uh, think better of trying to move through this thing and actually just hop into the water and wade toward the dais. It, it, All the, right. Be careful! Kiva immediately goes to grab her and help her up. Amity's going to start walking around through the water, just looking really intently for that fish. Make an investigation check. Is Metreon uh, sure. in the room? Uh, no, Metreon's up still in the little dungeon area. <laughs> okay. That's a 14 for investigation. 14. You kind of search around blindly. Uh, you don't find any indication of a fish or anything, but what you do find is a long black, a long slender black root that snakes toward the ground. You kind of pick it up it seems to be kind of drifting aimlessly through the water and seems to be connected to something, but what you're not entirely sure. It doesn't seem to have any fish attached to it, though. Can I follow it, or is it, like, connected to the bottom? Uh, it is... You can feel it's some sort of resistance, like, as though, you know, the little roots along the bottom, it seem to have burrowed perhaps slightly into the ground and the cracks of the earth below the water. But you can try to follow it if you'd like. The water itself is only around two feet deep, so you can do it without wading too far. Yeah, it might lead to some kind of, like, underground river. I'm following it. All right. You slowly 
uh, make your way along the uh, length of the black route, venturing further along the path through the water as Lillison and Kiva regroup along the altar. As Amity follows the route, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, Metron is ferociously rolling his eyes at everyone trying to wade through the water. He can't process the, the fact that this is happening. Yeah. Lillison is going to try her hardest to uh, spray acid on the altar and see if that does any damage. The acid splatters across the altar, giving it a terrible blood-red look. But it drifts slowly down and sizzles. The altar does not seem to be overly harmed by the impact. No, no, y'all don't get it. This is a solid piece of carved stone. There is nothing we can do to this thing, barring specialized equipment and literally a month or two. We're not breaking it. There's water here. Do we have a month? No, no we don't have no fucking have month. More than a week. I, I really don't. I, yeah, I, uh, I don't think this place is gonna let us live a month. All right, uh, Amity, as you follow the route through the water, you find that it leads toward the southern part of the chamber, where the, uh, room breaks out into a kind of cavernous alcove, where you see a large pile of refuse, uh, sorted plant matter, and, uh, general, um, you know, garbage and waste that has been piled into a large mound. The route seems to lead directly into it. There's something back here, like some kind of maybe garbage heap or like a nest for something. I... Is there, what is it? Is there like a rat or something? Is there something that we can kill? Uh, yeah, Emily's going to investigate through the mound, trying to see whether it's like the, the home of some animal. All right, make an investigation check for me. Uh, that's a four. Four. All right, you check through it for a moment, uh, searching in the interior. But as you poke toward it, you find that the uh, mound itself appears to entirely be construed of kind of a thin layer of rubble over almost like a thick netting of this uh, dark root that, you know, weaves over it and through it in many places. It, you, you're not able to make much prog progress in delving deeper into it. Hold on, man. What what's in there? It's it's too thick. It's like there's there's roots and brambles. I I can't really dig through it. Wait, roots and bramble? That's alive. Would that? I mean, I don't. Okay, it probably wouldn't count, but it might. I I, I have no idea. But it, would would any decent evil god take a sacrifice of a plant? Light the fucking thing up. Maybe maybe it'll work. Yeah, don't you- can't you do fire? I- yeah. Yeah, I'll- I'll give it a shot. I need- Wait, maybe we have to take it to the altar first. Yeah, that's a- that's a point. Yeah, let's, uh... Huh. Hmm. You think we can drag it? Or is it too big? I'm gonna try. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to- to drag this thing, possibly snapping, uh, roots if necessary to get as much of it as I can north. Alright, uh, as you reach forward to try to grab it, you feel a strange resistance, and as you watch, the roots that you have grasped begin to move slightly, almost as if they're slithering through your grip, tightening around each other, and as you watch, part of the section falls and then rises, and you realize that this isn't just a pile, there's some, it's something alive, all of it, and whatever it is, it seems to be not immediately moving. But this pile seems to be something more than just a pile. It almost feels alive. Oh, jeez. And it's big. Uh, Amity falls back into the water, probably. Ay! Uh, as, as, as Truffles also, like, splashes uh, waddling beside her. <laughs> There's something inside. Or, or maybe the whole thing's alive. I don't know. It's, it's wriggling. Amity, get away from it. Yeah, come on, come on, let's get out the water. What? I, did you... Good grief, I, did you, like, see what it was? Like, it, it, it's a it's a whole thing that... I don't 
doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <sighs> okay, yeah, yeah, like that's okay. I was trying to grab it, but I'm not sure whether it was actually trying to grab me. Well, I uh, don't go back to it. That's a... that's not... Let's not mess with that. Randy, you, you think you can maybe set it on fire? Just yeah. it up. Just, I, just get rid of it. The, okay, but uh, get ready to... I, I might not be able to kill it in one shot. I'm not a very powerful mage. But I can I can try. Just to be careful. Wait, wait. Maybe uh, the oil that, that's in that, that light... <laughs> I shudder to think, but maybe if you just throw some of it on, maybe it'll just kind of like, you know, uh, make it go uh, bigger boom, you know? Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. Anyway. Yeah, Mitty, as this conversation is going on, you notice something in the water. A oh my God, is it a fish? long black root just lazily drifting through the water that just twitches on the surface for a moment and then slowly sinks. And as you watch, you realize that you can see similar ripples and rivulets throughout the water. It seems that the roots that spread forth from this thing cover a large part of the chamber. Look, maybe we shouldn't be attacking this thing. But I, I think it might be everywhere. What do you I, mean, I everywhere? Roots. There's stuff all under the water. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, okay. I won't. I'll, I'll keep the lantern and fire plan on on standby. I what is this place? Well, keep, what do we do now then? They keep saying one must die. They're not stopping. I know I have ears. Well, then we've got to figure that out. We've got to we got that something's got to die. Or keep we get, or we leave. Back and forth at this point sort of worrying her bottom lip between her teeth, very visibly like, lost in fault at this point. Okay. Well, if one's, one's gotta die, then, uh, I guess our solution's obvious, isn't it? Yes, we killed that thing in the corner. No, I think it's something else. What? I mean, Amity's got a pig. Don't you fucking dare. No, no, no. Don't no. you fucking dare, you knife ear. I, it, what, what, if what else me? do you What suggest? if it's me? What if it's me? It's not you. Look, I've almost died a hundred times in this fucking house, and maybe that's a sign. If you can all get out of here, then it's worth it. Yes, it's a sign that you're not going to start now. How do you know? You don't know the first thing about me or what I've done. Maybe this is a way to make up for it. Hey, uh, Kiva, I have met a flat zero people who deserve what we've been through in the past two days, and I am pretty sure that does not include you. You're wrong. You have no idea how long I've wanted this anyway. I, if it's worth it to get you out of here, then... Kiva, your life is not worth less than that of a farm animal! We're not sacrificing that innocent creature. We're not. I... Uh, Amity starts uh, ritual casting speak with animals. <laughs> Listen, I... You are not offing yourself so we can get out. That is not happening. I That's have not nothing your... left after this. I have no family. I have no friends. Everyone that I have ever loved is dead. This would be a blessing and it would help you get out. You're not doing this. I am. You are not making the rest of us live with this for the rest of our lives. It's it's Kiva. not it's not it's not a choice for you. It's 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 to Yeah, help but we you. have to fucking watch. Kiva. You don't Kiva. have to watch. You can leave and I'll take care of it and you guys can go. Kiva. 
if you want us to take care of it, I'll, I'll help you. Hey, Matreon, don't you dare. I'm not... She's putting herself on there. I'm not... I'm not doing nothing that she she's not okay with. I, I don't care that she's not okay with it. She is a living being. She it's is not a your fucking choice. Being. It's not your fucking choice. You're right. It's not. So you can either come with us, get on board for this, and, and hopefully get the fuck out of here, or you can, I don't know, kill that poor girl's pig. You're What's it going to be? You're all sick. What's it going to be? I... They, I... What's it going to be? Come on. I... Come on. No. I am not helping you do this. I refuse. I... Matreon. Kiva. Look, I can help I you. Am... I can help you decide. I can tell you what I've done and, and it'll all make sense. Fine then. Tell us. Let us know what's so awful that we can never, ever come back from it. That whatever, however many years of got you've got left, that nothing good can be drawn from your life again. Let us know. It's my fault my daughter's dead. I, I... After my father died, I met someone in the Thieves Guild and I tried to turn my life around and I got pregnant. And I knew I should have left him a long time ago. I knew that he was cruel and that it wouldn't be the right place to raise a baby, but I was so excited for a chance to start over. He would drink and get so angry and he hated the way she cried. So one night he came home and he carved her up with this scimitar. And I came in and I saw what he'd done and, and it was too late. And then I killed him. I have the blood of my mother and my father and my daughter and that devil of a man on my hands. I have nothing left. I left everything I had in the garden next to my house. If I can do this, if I can make it right, then it's worth it. And then maybe I can be with her again. Metreon's kind of like, his jaw is clenched and tense, but uh, you can hear him starting to load up a bolt into his hand crossbow. Trail. Millicent is going to walk around standing on the second step up from the water uh, shooting a dirty look at Metreon over her shoulder and reach forward and take one of Kiva's hands in both her own No, you don't It's fine It's Why are you touching me? Listen, if you make one of us kill you, we inherit all of that sin and all of that guilt. We need you here after we escape. If you feel like you're so burdened with all of this sin, then work it off, pay it off, do something good with the rest of your life. You can balance things. How do you know? Because there's no other choice, is there? There's no absolution waiting for us. We have to live with what we've done. Kiva squeezes Lillison's hand and 
then lets it go. If we don't find another option, then I'm the solution. Can we agree on that? No. No. Yeah. Well, I've got one, and that's all we need. So let's try to figure something else out then. Deer rubs at his eyes and then just looks at Andy. I, uh, I, I know it would be intolerably cruel to ask this of you, Amity, but, but we not, we might, we might not all make it if you, uh, if something doesn't happen, to, if Truffle doesn't die. I can't make that decision. It, as we just said, it's not anybody's right to decide who lives or who dies. But I'd ask that you at least consider it. That's all. Emily is still <laughs> chanting uh, the um, syllables of the ritual casting "Speak with animals," but for tone gets. More clenched, more tense, more annoyed. What are we doing here? I'm still not convinced that all of this is an actual way out and not just some figment of memory or a trap well of course it's a trap this whole house is a trap everything about it is a trap but I don't see a way out of the snare right now sometimes if you're gonna get out of a bear trap you can't pick the you can't pick the spring you gotta cut off the foot All right, at this point, uh, how long does Speak With Animals take to cast virtually Amity? In minutes, plus one action. All right, it's at this point that you complete the ritual. <laughs> um, Truffle. He looks up at you, eyes big. W what is it? What's going on there? They're out. What are those things on the walls? I don't like them. It's going to be. It's going to be all right. Look, hey, everyone else, if you want, if you want to talk to him, you can do it through me now. Okay. Now we can have a conversation with Truffle if you want. If you want to try to convince him that 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 he should be the one. Kiva walks away. She's not going to do this. What? Well, we don't need to fucking do that. We have someone here who's willing to put themselves down, and you have someone here who's willing to do the work for you. So, that doesn't need to be a focal discussion. Yeah, it does. Let, let me try. Please. Try what? Talk to the pig. You fucking piece of work. Oh, you're hardly one to talk, mister. Oh, yes, I'll off the suicidal woman if she asks. You know, maybe I'll fucking off you. Might be welcome at this point, you piece of shit. And you'll notice, too, that he has not climbed down out of the, uh, the corridor. He's just kind of, like, pointing at everybody and then kind of retreating back in. Uh, TM, what was the mechanism for this secret door? It seemed to be just a simple uh, panel. Uh, just pushing it allowed the secret door to swing open. It seems okay. to be easily openable from either side. All right, I would like to cast Mage Hand and push the door shut. All right. Metron, you watch as the skeletal hand appears and shoves the door closed in your face. Fine, fine. You all get to die. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. Erthrandir is going to carefully step across the altar, wincing as he trudges through the water, and 
approach Amity and Truffle. How, how do I do this? Just, just tell me what you want to tell him and I'll, I'll repeat it to him. Oh, okay. Aerith's going to kneel down. Kind of so he's on eye level, like the way that people always talk to children. <laughs> hey, Truffle. My name's uh, Aerith and Deer. I'm a friend of your uh, owner, companion. I don't really know how to say that. So, uh, we've got a problem. There's... There's a big issue we've run into where if uh, somebody doesn't die on this weird stone thing, then then we all are going to die. And I, I don't want anybody to die, Truffle. I don't want that. But... I'm afraid that if we don't, or if something doesn't, then we're all going to get hurt. And so, I was going to ask, I know it's not, oh my god, I'm not, I'm not going to ask somebody to, he, Erthrandir, just suddenly, look, like, his voice chokes up and he looks away, I'm asking someone to off themselves for me. I can't, I <laughs> okay. It, it we but what we need is it, one of us is going to have to go and stop existing in order for us to get out of here. And I was wondering if it would be okay if that were you. I, I know it's not it's not anything we want. I don't want it. I I don't think anybody wants it, but 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 people live a lot longer than animals and and I, I the other person who might die has a lot of life left to live and so do you you're a, you're gonna you'd be grow up to be big and strong I can tell but I, I don't want to lose that uh, is that okay Amity, of course, repeats what Erthrandir says, putting a heavy mask of qualification um, around some things. Like, uh, Erthrandir thinks that if if one of us um, gets sacrificed here, then we can escape. Uh, I... Truffle looks up at you, sniffling, big, beady black eyes opening wide. I, I, I don't why why would why would that happen no, I, I don't like I, I, what if, if there's if there's a bad thing we can we can run away we can hide from it right I think so I'm I'm just telling you what that guy thinks. He dips forward and just nuzzles uh, into your leg, snorting unhappily. Then, then let's run away. I don't want to be here. It, it's scary. And he, 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 I, don't, I don't know what, you, what he means. I don't know what you mean. Let's run away from the big bad thing. He keeps like pushing against your leg, like as if like softly headbutting you, trying to get you moving. Right, let's let's run away. Amity sort of takes one step on the dais, but holds Truffle loosely. Mm. What does he arms. say? Um, he, he says that there's a bad thing here, and we can all run away from it, and we don't have to do this. I. Oh, I, I must not have explained well enough. I, I, I guess it's there's some things that are hard to get across to animal level intelligences. It's a, I, I, oh, God, ah, damn it. 
Here, come on, let me try again. I can, I can, I can, I can, here. I, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure it out. Damn, There's air nowhere left to run. You've explained it well enough. Look, in, in stories, right, you, you never hear about stories with, with one pig. It's, it's always the three little pigs or the, the five pigs that went to the market. That's because I... in stories, pigs, they represent ordinary people that are together in families. I've known Truffle for two years. Okay. If you if you want to to take him from me, then it's going to be your fault. Earthen Deer looks like he's going to be sick. Metreon realizing that he is now in the dark. Uh <clears throat> The, that kind of immediate adrenaline rush of the uh, uh, rebelliousness uh, is met with oh god I'm trapped in the dark and so he's going to try and uh, in his very panicked way start to like fight against Lillison's mage hand against the door and try to pry it open it's, again. It's not difficult it's just a mage hand and after a moment of bringing yourself together you shove hard against the door and kick it open spilling back into the light of the room beyond and i'd say that he would like he would like kind of bum rush it enough to fall down onto the platform all right what Touch the fuck i have a fucking do that again and he points it little listen do what so what are we doing i uh i talked to truffle he's uh not receptive under understandably I I don't know. I don't I don't know. Kiva at this point is sitting on the top step of the dais just looking down at the water. Kiva I I I don't I don't really have anything to say that all mean anything. I know that, but I don't want you to die. I don't want anyone to die, but like, I you nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves to die for this, for the whims of some fanatical death trap. They don't the bastards that built this place don't deserve you. I don't care what you did. I don't care about any of that, but they don't deserve anyone's life. Love, there's no other way, and I'm not going to force Amity to give up that little one. I I know what it's like to lose things that you're close to, so I, I won't force her to do that. But the longer we wait, the more we're just putting off the inevitable. I really do think we have to make a decision about this. Atherin, dear. Yeah? Would you give me that lantern, please? He gladly obliges. Okay. Lillison takes it, hops off the dais, and starts wading through the water towards the garbage heap. Uh, be careful. Mm. The water sloshes around your feet, getting deep into your boots. You can feel the cold, clammy, murky water clinging to your skin, wetting and drenching the clothes even further beyond what your shoes and socks were before. You can feel yourself nudging against more of the roots in the water, other things floating there, dead, unmoving. You kick aside a few rocks and pebbles, slowly slushing and sliding your way as you pass into the dimly lit, darkened corner on the southern end of the room for a moment, leaning against the pillar beside you as you see the large alcove-like ca cavern of refuse stretch out below you. Okay. Willison is going to lean forward as if she's going to 
rummage through some of the garbage, then just shakes her head and sprays some acid over it. All right. The you watch as a blood red spray of ashes bursts from the air before Lillison's greenish shard of crystal in her hand. You watch as it splatters across the surface of the uh, refuse heap. And then sizzles hissing. Uh, Lillison, I will need you to roll damage for me, please. That is a four. All right. It sprays across the surface. You watch as small parts of the black roots begin to smoke and melt before more roots begin to spiral and pull tighter together. You watch... Well, Metron's the first to notice that the water in the room is beginning to stir. What the small fuck? waves and rivulets running through. Amity, you watch as several forking paths of black roots drifting through the water surface to the top, moving like underwater currents as they slide through the room toward the cavern. Slowly, you watch as they furl up the massive mound of refuse beginning to pull itself up, the black roots spinning and spiraling across its surface until you realize it's not just a pile, it's not just a mound. It's a shell. A thick shell of plant matter coming together forming this massive shapeless mound of matter slowly Lillison you feel the gaze of every one of the faceless shadows turn to you with that Erthrin dear. Yes. You watch as slowly the chant seems to fade around you until the voices of the shadows are muted, that the refrain continues, and you watch as below on the altar the ever spilling cloud of mist thins before stopping entirely, the last curl of fog like cloud rolling off the water before vanishing leaving only cold, clear air behind. Lillison, you watch as this massive, shapeless mound begins pulling itself out of the water, each inch, each foot, each yard of vines and black roots coming up together, tightening into this shifting, amorphous mass that now towers above you. You hear, far below you, something shake and tremble. And then a deep, guttural roar from everywhere and nowhere fills the chamber. I will need everyone to please roll initiative. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> ah! Today on Fuck This Shit Incorporated. I would watch that. Same. That's a 10. That's a 15. Three. Uh, do make sure to roll your initiative on the combat tracker. Ooh, 18. I don't, I'm, I'm trying. It's... No worries, we'll talk about this later. Uh, for now, I'll add <laughs> these initiative of three. Uh, and let me add Aerithrum Deer as well. What did you roll? Aerithrum Deer? Working on it. You're good. All right. Uh, Eight. Or, sorry, 11. Very good. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, Metrion, you watch as this massive, shapeless, plant formed mound heaves itself out of the alcove to the south. Its long tendrils wrapping and waving through the air as this massive shadow falls over Lilith and its bloated form, overcasting her entirely. This pile of waste and refuse and decaying plant matter pulling itself into this one massive creature. And then it opens this massive maw filled with swirling plant-like tendrils and once again roars. It's your turn, Metreon. What are Metreon you doing? Metreon screams bloody murder. Uh, 
and the bolt that was reserved for Kiva, uh, he immediately and just instinctually swings and fires at uh, at this mound of, of plant matter. All right, roll to hit. Uh, that's going to be a 12. A 12. All right, a 12, unfortunately, glances off to the side as this thing's thick uh, plant-like shell comes around and tightens against it, deflecting the blow entirely. You can uh, tell just dragon. from that one glance, this thing is massive. Frozen. Yes? That's good, Z, you'll take care of it. Um, question. Uh, these cloaked figures are all just looking in the direction of this creature? Uh... Right now, uh, yes, they are all looking toward this creature. Uh, and I know that they're immaterial, so um, I'm going to bonus action disengage, uh, and he's going to go ahead and move. Oh, I guess I don't, no, I'm not going to bonus action disengage. I'm just going to move. He's trying to get as far away from this thing as possible, uh, and that's my turn. All right, very good. Uh, as you watch the cross of a bolt splatters onto the ground and then falls into the ground with a plunk slowly sinking into the water. Uh, as that happens, Metreon's turn ends and Kiva, you see this massive hulking form rising up into the air before Lillison. And at that moment, you realize fear echoing at the base of your heart and your stomach. The strength that this thing, thing seems to wield it's horrifying. It's terrifying. And it's coming straight ahead. What would you like to do? Kiva is trying very hard not to just rage right now. She's going to jump into the water. She's going to, uh, that's 5, 10, 15. She's going to grab Lillison and she's going to try to put, push or pull her back towards the altar where she's, we've got to go. We've got to run, run. Lillison's not arguing. All right. All right so yeah. I, I will allow her... an uncontested grapple check, um, and you can pull her at half speed. Okay, great. So she's going to pull her back. That's five. Uh, yeah, just about five feet. She can pull her back. Half speed. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, great. So she's going to pull her back that way and just say that the plan is to fucking run and just get the fuck out of here. And that would be her turn. All right, uh, you're ending your turn right there. Yes. Okay. Geez, that's uh, do. Erythrindir, you're up. Okay. Erythrindir is just looking at this thing with a air of abject horror, and then he he takes a look at Amity and then just kind of mumbles, "Hey, uh, you got any spells left in the tank?" Yeah. Okay. Can anything that'll help keep this thing locked down? Um, I could try the illusion thing. Worth a shot. I'll I'll do my thing for now. You plan what you need to. And with that, Erythrindir is going to begin to sing again, a desperate, raw song, his voice hoarse in Elvish, a chant of saying that in, you know, when death is about to come, isn't it so much better to just laugh? Isn't Wouldn't it be so much better to embrace humor instead of bringing the executioner's axe down? And he casts Tasha's hideous laughter. I'm going to need to make a, it to make a wisdom save. Woo! All right. Tasha! Ooh. Let's see how it does. That is a five. Yes. No! Woo! Uh, actually, one question about Tasha's. Does it need to understand your language? Nope. It just needs to have an int of above four. It has an int of five. Congratulations. Nice. Whoop, whoop. Nice. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, you watch as the spell uh, takes hold. You watch as the uh, magic that Erythrindir spins weaves into something deeper. And with that, you watch as the maw of the creature suddenly twists, contorting the entire thing, whirling upon the ground, 
these roots suddenly wavering in a terrifying, wriggling cacophony of sickening, rolling movement and motion. Somehow you feel as though it's laughing. But truth be told, you're not sure how. And the contortions and the renditions of appearance that this thing has makes it even more disturbing. It's no mirthful sight. Rather, it feels like this thing is disgustedly and violently contorting its entire being racking. You watch as skulls are violently pushed out, old bones and bits of refuse and waste shifting across its massive body, the plant roots twisting in a never-ending symphony of motion. Uh, that is the end of Aerithrondir's turn. I believe. Or actually, no, do you have any movement? Uh, yeah. Aerithrondir is going to slip up, slip... Uh, is the water difficult terrain? The water is not difficult terrain. All right, and then he's going to just kind of barrel past Matreon and get on the stairs. And that's his turn. All right. So, with that, uh, I believe that the next person's turn is Lillison. Okay, Lillison is stumbling backwards through the water, being dragged by Kiva, uh, trying not to trip on all of these. Uh... Did you say all the roots had gotten pulled up? Uh, it seems that all of the roots have been pulled up, yes. You don't okay. feel any with your feet as you make your way through the water. Okay. Um, how much oil is in this lan lamp lantern? Uh, very little. It's, you know, maybe a fist size. I mean, the lantern itself is, you know, pretty small, and you don't think that there'd be more than, you know, a few ounces of oil. Definitely not enough to cover this thing. Okay. Um, she'll look at it, and then she will summon her mage hand to just ha be holding it, um, off to the side, um, while she casts another acid splash at it. All right. Uh, it makes a dexterity saving throw, I believe. Yes. That is a zero. Ah! Wow. Okay. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. How much uh, damage does it take? That's going to be four points of damage. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, the acid splash washes over it, and you watch as a few more bits of root and decay, diseased vegetation uh, disintegrates, chewed up by the acid. But looking over it, you've barely made a dent into this thing's massive bulk. With each, you imagine that the acid that you take would take a long, long time to chew through this thing. It seems okay. almost unbothered, unaffected. Only like, most like the only impact you've made is cosmetic. Okay, uh, in that case, Lillison is going to then turn around and run for the wooden wheel thing. All right, and because it has just taken damage, it gets to make another wisdom saving throw with advantage. See if it saves from Tasha's. That's an eight and a ten. What's your DC, Earthrun Deer? Thirteen. Yes. Yes. All right. Oh. But you can see that for a moment. As Lillison's acid splashes across, it seems to shift for a moment, almost as though it's resisting the spell that has it in its grasp, but it settles back into its contorted pile on the ground. As the acid flies, Earthrun Deer just yells, Please don't hit it! And then that is all he is saying. All right. All right. Um, Lillison is going to be like, I don't know what you did. Oh, fine. And uh, she's going to, as previously stated, uh, run towards this wooden wheel thing. All right. With that, I believe that's the end of Lillison's turn. Uh... Amity, you're up next. Can I jump from this dais to the left platform, or is it too higher up than it currently am? Uh, with this running jump, yes, you can make it. Sweet. Assuming your strength is uh, at least 10. It's 14. Uh, Go for it. Amity uh, curls up Truffle and leaps over this thing. <sighs> all right, Truffle, you were right. There's a bad thing. We're all going to run from it. And... Um, See, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, just before exiting the corridor, um, she's going to turn to uh, Kiva and say, 
You got this? You're not going to die. Not yet. Just just follow us and give bardic inspiration to Kiva. Oh. And then mm. use an action to dash. All right. And as soon as you leap from the dais, Amity, you hear the chanting of the shadows start up again, this time their message changing. Lorgoth the Decayer, we awaken thee, they chant again and again and again. All right, with that, with a stunning uh, one for initiative, you watch as this creature, this plant mass of matter begins, continues to twist and contort upon the ground, still evidently imprisoned within the confines of Erythrindir's spell. Now, I believe that it can do this at the end of yep, its turn, it so... Save. Let's see how it does. That is a 17. That yeah. one passes. Oh, shit. All right, you watch as it drags itself up, water streaming from it in long streams and waterfalls, and the cult's chant changes once more. The end comes. Death be praised, they chant. In dark and terrible glee. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of its turn. Metreon, you're up. You can see this uh, thing is shaking itself up off the bottom uh, and is beginning to prepare to draw itself up and move toward you. Uh, seeing uh, Amity have the right idea uh, and realizing that if he tries to move that wheel, it's just opening up another portal for it to escape from. Uh, Metreon is going. Metreon is going to go ahead and follow Amity. And he's going to use his uh, action and bonus action to dash <laughs> and just uh, just. All right, he makes a break for it. Emma, do you see Metreon rush past you, dashing with speed that you could, that you've not seen from him before, blurring past you before jolting his way into the next room. And as I pass by Emma, I say, "Come on, love, get out of here." And that's my turn. All right, very good, uh, Kiva. This thing is towering before you, and you hear your friends slowly beginning to make their way out. What would you like to do? Oh, Kiva's gonna get the fuck out of there. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and I think six is her movement, and she's planning on going through the dungeon corridor as well. All right, are you dashing or using your action for something else? Oh, she can She can do that? Oh, amazing. Okay, yeah, she's gonna fucking do that. All right, isn't, I will say wait, that you have one, le what's that? Yeah, isn't that? Isn't that raised above the water? Yeah, so you would ha I was just about to say, it would be difficult to rain. It's five feet above the ground, so I would require two steps of movement to get to that point. You okay, have to kind of, like, haul yourself up. Okay, that's great. Um, so how much movement do I have left, then? Just just uh, 20? Whatever you think, minus one. Okay. She'll at least make it there and then turn around and make sure that everyone else is out of the room, and then... But that's her turn. All right. Very good. That is the end of Kiva's turn. Erythrindir, it's just you and Lillison left in the room. Lillison standing by the wooden wheel, the massive mound of refuse at the bottom drawing itself up. The mist in the room is now totally dissipated, only leaving the dark surface of the water rippling and churning in its wake. What would you like to do? Uh, the porticlis is closed, right? Correct. All right, it's good. about, um, you said it was about like nine inches off the water. Yes, not nearly enough to push yourself on, push yourself under. Yeah. Would do I get the sense that this thing could push itself under it? Uh, you're not sure. Uh, can I make a check? If you, uh, you can make a uh, nature or arcana check to know more about this thing. Nature it is. 20, dirty 20. All right, you recognize this as maybe not identical, but certainly very similar in uh, evidence to a creature you've seen in many forests known as a shambling mound. They are ponderous trudgers, all-consuming devourers that lurk in dark places and empty spaces in the woods and wilderness, in marshes and swamps and woods. 
they are ever hungry and both and highly humbly omnivorous. They will devour and consume anything that wades into their path. With that 20, you know that they tend to be somewhat slow. But that beyond that, you're not sure how adept they are at moving through tighter spaces. All right. He, you just, they tend to, be, tend to be large, ponderously full of bulk mounds of refuse and yeah. plant matter. He gives a look at Lillison. I, uh, this thing, I, I, I've heard of these. They can't move fast, but I, I don't know if it can get under that gap. I, could you, I mean, run, obviously, but could you see if you could use your mage thingy to close that? I was about to close it myself. Oh, that works too. Just make sure you get out. This thing, uh, it, it, it may not be able to move fast, but still, please come. Yes, D take the lantern from me. I, are you, sh all right, sure. And he'll grab, he'll gladly grab it. And then use his action to dash. Ru nearly running into Kiva as, she, as he sprints. Is and then continuing on his way out. And that's his turn. All right, very good. Lillison, you're up next. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my action to try to shove this wheel the other way uh, to try to slam it closed. Uh, so is it currently open? Had it already been open before? So last episode, um, we had used my mage hand to be able to raise it at maybe about nine inches. So I want to just undo that. Okay, that's easy enough. That's just your free object interaction. That takes little to no effort. Okay. And with that, uh, I'm also going to try to get to the door uh, following the stairs this time. <laughs> and then uh, using my action to keep going. All right, very good. That's Lewison's turn. Amity, you're up next. All right, uh, Amity keeps pace with um, Metreon, at least for the moment. Uh, just getting the heck away. And um, there's some stairs here. Yep, you make your way up the stairs onto the next floor. You smart, Metreon, let's get out of here. Uh, I guess. Am I in the next floor now? Uh, yes, oh. if you'd like to move to Death uh, to Durst House B1F on your navigation at the top. Oh, fancy. All right, um, All right. yeah, end of my turn is just going to be uh, continuing to move. All right, very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn, which means it's the mound's turn. As it moves, you hear it begin to spill forward this terrible sound of this plant matter seeping through the water. You hear this sloshing as it pushes forward, another echoing roar as it shoves its way, its massive mass forward. It moves forward and Kiva, you see it squeezing its way through the secret door, bursting into the space and filling the entirety of the area where the uh, chains now lie. It ends before you. It seems not to have its action uh, left. It did have to do is it to dash there, but it is right next to you. Its massive tendrils flooding through the space as it slams its way forward, rushing forward to fill every inch of space available to it. Ooh, it's now okay. directly next to you. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Metreon, you're up next. Uh, Metreon's going to keep going. All right. Uh, so let me go ahead and... All right, and you're making your way up the stairs as well? All right, I've placed you on B1F, the next right. base before. All right, I'm there. Um, so yeah, he's just going to use all of his uh, action, bonus action um, movement. All right, very good. That's the end of your turn. Uh, Kiva, uh, well, this mask uh, thing is... Uh, oh, yes, there sorry. Is a, there is a thing. So um, if he keeps running, uh, he does know that Kiva fell into a trap. Uh, so would I have to make like a dex check to leap over it or? No, with a running start, you can leap a number of feet equal to, I believe your strength score. So the pit itself is only like five feet across. 
Okay, cool. And that's my turn. All right, very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn, which leads us to Kiva. This thing is towering right above you. Uh, its tendrils lashing into your air, trying to grasp around you and slam it toward you. What would you like to do? Kiva's going to scream and then take her action and run uh, as fast as her little legs can carry her. All right, are you disengaging first? Uh, yes, she's going to do that. All right, very good. And that will be her turn. All right, very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Next up, Erthrandir. You hear this thing's roars shaking the space behind you, and it comes rushing toward you. Oh, I ain't oh, having any of that. Going out into the corridor. Uh, okay. It's past the point where we can close the door on it at this point, right? Like, well past. It's see You can already see it beginning to spill into the hallway. Regrettable. All right. He's going to give a look between Kiva and Millicent, kind of mentally gauging if they can actually outpace this thing. Hmm. Yeah, no, can't. All you can do is all you... Huh. Yeah, no, he's running. He's... He's good. He's using his action to dash. And retreating onto the first floor as well. But not before yelling back to Kiva. I... Just... Don't... Be careful. And yeah, he's heading up the stairs. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, Lillison, you are up. Can I drag Kiva with me? Uh, if you'd like, you can use your action to grapple her like she did you and uh, move, pulling her at half speed behind you. I will do that if Kiva doesn't mind. Uh, please, thank you. I believe that puts me here and you would be right in front of me, actually. Uh, you would be pulling her, not pushing her. Um, okay. Move back. All right, that's my turn. All right, there's nothing else you want to do with your bonus action? Nope. All right, very good. Uh, that means, uh, Amity, you're up. What are you doing? As you move, make your way into the right. next floor, by the way, you can, there's silence for a moment before the thing roars again, and that's when you hear the earth quake again. You feel the foundations begin to tremble. You watch and you hear the splintering of wood. And suddenly you watch as dust and dirt and earth begin sifting forth from the ceiling overhead. Amity uh, turns and yells down the stairs. Is everyone doing okay? Everyone just keep running. It We're came trying. through the door after us. Keep running. Uh, she's just gonna in fear of the, the whole basement collapsing, jump over this pit, and then taking the dash action. Uh, I think I think it's this way. Oh good, Metreon's also here. Um, Amity goes ahead of Metreon for probably the last time. Um, I, I, I think they're gonna catch up with us. That's my turn. All right, very good. Uh, that is the end of Amity's turn. One moment while I move uh, Earth and Deer to the next floor. Um, all right, uh, with that, the mound takes its next turn as you hear it pushing, shoving itself through the space. Kiva, you turn around, you see it's slamming funneling through the earth and walls of the corridor right behind you as you hear the foundations of the house beneath to tremble and shake around you that are sifting down from the higher floors. You can hear the beams splintering and cracking and the sagging roof over you beginning to tremble and sink further as this thing's massive bulk and weight forces itself through. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Metreon, you're up. Uh, uh, same as the first. Uh, zipping past Amity. Uh, he's not even talking at this point. He's uh, eyes forward, just darting. And that's going to be my turn. All right, very good. Uh, with that, 
Uh, next up is Kiva. You are directly next to this thing once again. You've got Lois and Stephen by the hand, but what would you like to do? She's going to um, use her action to disengage from the Shambling Mound, and then she's going to see if almost she can, like, scoop up Lillison and just sort of push her forward for the rest of her movement. Um, I would probably say that takes another... Mm. Honestly, you know, at this point, uh, what's your strength score? Uh, 13. 13. 13. Uh, about how much does Lillison weigh, do you think? Because I'm trying to figure out Kiva's carrying capacity here. She weighs 130 pounds. All right. Uh, yeah, Kiva, you probably won't be able to do it. Okay, you can, can I, like, just though. push? Yeah, I'll, dr- I'll try to drag her then for the rest of my movement. How much do it? Just half that? Uh, you would have to grapple her, yes. Yeah, okay, so she and would do that. And then... speed. Yeah, so that's what she'll do. Aren't we already in a grapple, though? Uh, she's you are grappling her in a in a manner of speaking so it's uh, yeah Kiva. uh it's it's fine if if we just want to do whatever gets us the most movement honestly at this point up to you what do you want to do all right so she will um she is, will let yep she will let Lillison continue to grapple her and just like use her just try to move let's try to get as far as we can All right, if you'd like to move yourself to where you would be while uh, moving at half speed with Lillison, you can move two squares and then you can begin to grapple her. Okay, great. And then that's that's it, I think. Mm-hmm. So I think you would be here, I, th- I think. Okay, great. Perfect. And Lillison would be about there. Awesome. All right, uh, with that, Erthrandir, you are up. You're emerging into the next floor and the house's foundations are trembling and shaking around you. We hear something crashing in the distance. What would you like to do? He looks for all the world like he just wants to sprint, but kind of takes a moment to yell back to the others. How, have you got any distance on it? Not much. Damn it, I'm out of spells. Okay. And, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, he... They live or die on their own merits right now. He's going to keep moving. He's going to dash. Seeing the pit trap, he is also going to do what Matreon did and just vault that. All right, very good. And then kind of reaching the crossroads, he I kind of yells to the others, Hey, which way did you go? I'm over here, Amity shouts from the left. Gotcha. And... As his object interaction, can Erythrindir just pull out his knife and scratch a big arrow on the wall for the other two? Uh, I will allow it. Okay, excellent. He does that and then moves the rest of his way. All right. Lillison, you're up. Okay. Lillison is going to uh, let Kiva go and just say, just run, keep running. You'll go faster that way. And uh, we'll take her own advice. So that's the first 30 feet, and then um, I'll move on to the other map. There you go. Thank you. And I believe she's going to have to stop right in front of the pit trap. All right, very good. But we'll assume that she's retaining the momentum between rounds. Yeah, thank you. Very good. All right, uh, with that, that is the end of Lillison's turn. Amity, you're up next. The others are coming, she says to Erythrindir, halfway between a statement and a question. I I think so. Kivu's moving slow, but I think... I, I don't... Probably... Regardless, we can't go back. That thing can squeeze. We gotta keep moving. I mean, if you can find some way to block its path, do it, but I'm I'm out of options. Amity runs forward. Maybe maybe once we get up the stairs we can we can block it from following us. Um We just need a door. Yeah. 
and dashes, uh, ending the turn almost to the staircase. All right, very good. End of Amity's turn, which means it is the Mound's turn once again, as it slams itself through the space behind. Let me see, one, two, three. Unfortunately, it manages to reach Kiva without using its dash. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. All right, with that, it rolls forward, filling the space behind you, this massive mound of writhing plant matter and dark roots and vines, and it slams toward you. That's a 16 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. All right, you suffer 14 points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay, I'm down to four <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's going to move forward and slam you again. Oh, shit. <laughs> One, One must rolls. die. One must die. Fifteen. That misses. You raise your shield at the last moment, filling the space, deflecting the blow. It re reaches around for your neck, slamming towards you, and at the last moment, with your last breath, Throw it off of you, and its attack misses. That's the end of its turn. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind! All right, that's the end of its turn, Metrion. As you step forward and look toward the staircase ahead of you, you feel something deep and terrible rising up within you. No, you you can't leave. That, that's not that's not possible. That's not okay. You're here. You belong here. You can't leave this place. You feel that terror and fear and deep sorrow welling up inside of you. No, you can't leave. You won't leave. Yeah, um, he braces himself uh, against the wall, feeling those pangs of desperation, of loneliness, of uh, abject terror, and uh, almost kind of comes to his senses looking around, uh, hearing Amity coming up. Uh, he looks around the corner. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we getting out of here? Are we, are we leaving? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going up. We're going to uh, lock the stairs. Where are the others? They're, they're coming. f and is right behind me. He gulps. Uh, and he is going to... If I look up the stairs, uh, I know where they go, but do I feel anything coming, like, emanating from them? Uh, make a perception check. Uh, 11. 11? Uh, you can, I mean, you can feel the same thing as before, the house shaking. You can see the cobwebs twisting as a, as the entire dungeon uh, space seems to shift and quake. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be anything coming from that staircase. Is there, is, so this compulsion, this kind of sudden pang that I'm feeling, is it like wanting me to stay here? Is it wanting me to, like, is there any It feels like you drive? shouldn't leave this. You shouldn't go up these stairs. You should stay down here. You shouldn't go any farther. Okay. Uh, and I look to Amity. I don't think we, I don't think I can get out of here. We'll come back. We'll find some other way to deal with it and, and get rid of the mist, okay? We can find supplies up there. Uh, Me Metreon, what's happening? Metreon is going to... Metreon's going to start... Do I feel like this... Do I feel anything like pulling me in any sort of direction, or is it just like a feeling? Just a overwhelming compulsion, similar to the strange swings and emotion you felt. But as much as you try to resist them, you cannot. It is akin to a full compulsion and you are powerless to resist it. Okay, so he's just going to stay there and wait for the others. Um... Alright. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Kiva, you're up against this thing now. You're hurting. You're, half of your body is bruised and you're pretty sure you feel a rib broken. What would you like to do? 
So Kiva is going to rage and for her bonus action, and then she is going to um, fuck, 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 fuck. All right. Uh, she's going to disengage again for her action and just run up the stairs with her 30 movement. All right, very good. I'll place you on the next map and we will Thank move, you. relocate there. All right, you feel your heart pounding. You hear footsteps fading around the bend and you hear the things shuddering bulk roaring as it makes its way up behind you. All right, is that your turn? Yes, that's my turn. Very good. All right, uh, with that, next up is Erthrandir. Okay. He is going <laughs> to... He's kind of taken it upon himself to keep up with the status, che status checks on the others, so he yells again, Hey, any any luck? By what he's yelling down the hallway where Lillison and Kiva are coming from. We're we're running. Just keep going. At okay, uh, at the hall at the end of the hallway, take a left and then go straight. I'm drawing. Air look for the arrows on the walls, and then he's going to. Yeah, he's gonna dash, doing the same thing where he draws an arrow, a, in the right path, and then just going after the others. And that's his turn. All right, very good. That is the end of your turn. Uh, next up is Lillison. Okay. Um, Lillison is going to pause, seeing that Kiva is not uh, apparently coming up behind her. She's actually going to waffle for a moment and then go back. Oh, God. All right. Um, with the remainder of uh, her move and with her action, uh, she's going to grapple Kiva if Kiva lets her and drag her like five feet away, uh, five feet over, and then let her go and say, just keep running. Get in front of me. Get in front of me. Kiva will not argue with her. Okay. Uh, keep it. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Uh, that's the end of Lillison's turn, I believe, uh, which means Amity, you're up next. You can hear Arthur coming up behind you. You see Metreon pressed up against the wall and the entire place is shaking. What are you doing? Yeah, Amity, Amity's run towards. Met Metreon, what are you doing? Get off the way. What? Come on. He's got the thousand yard stare going on. He's just looking into the darkness. Uh, his red pupils are dilated, uh, trying to compensate for the lack of light. Uh, but otherwise, uh, he looks like he's seen a ghost. Uh, and is uh, just kind of braced up against the wall, like looking around, unsure of what to do. Oh god, is there something behind me? And when he spins and presumably sees nothing, it, like waves a hand in front of Metreon's face. Um, I... <laughs> And then just tries, like, slapping him with her tail. Come on! Yeah, he'll let you. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, <sighs> if, when you hit him, he just, like, it doesn't snap him out. Ethan, do you have a little help here? Um, I guess Amity is going to enter turn by trying to, like, grab onto Metreon, hoping that Ethan can maybe help <laughs> just, like, carry him. <laughs> All right. Anything else in your turn? Uh, I I don't think so. I'm 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 here waiting for Erythrindir, and if there somehow is an action left over, then uh, no, I I think if I'm grappling Metreon, then I I don't I can't like ready an action or anything. 
All right. Uh, with that, the mound takes its turn. All right. With that, you hear the stairs shake and tremble as the thing rushes up to fill the space behind you, appearing directly behind Kiva once more. Um, it sorry. Did dash to was get there. there was there a way that I could have put like Kiva in front of me, or was it like did it need to be a drag? Um, it needed. Yeah, I mean, you okay. could have pushed her instead of grappling. Uh, I'll, I'll let you switch that if you think that's how it would have. Yeah, I, I would yeah. really prefer to have done that. Okay, that's fair. Just don't make a habit of it. Yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, anyways, it has dashed to get there, so it cannot move any farther. Uh, Kivo is not grappled by Lillison, uh, but she was shoved to her position peacefully. Uh, regardless, that is the end of the mound's turn. Metreon, you're still frozen in fear, and you feel something stirring deep within you. You can't leave. It's impossible. No, he won't let you. He's not going to let me leave. Do I have an idea of who he is? You feel the stirring in the back of your mind, and you feel the cold presence that you first felt when Thorn uh, flew into your chest. Ah, uh, okay. Briefly recede once more. That little fucking shit's not gonna let me leave. And almost like trying to fight it, but eventually succumbing to it, he just starts to look around and uh, he's, he didn't go into these areas, uh, but he remembers that uh, that Kiva had checked them and said that whatever was in there had left, so he's actually going to go ahead and uh, flee into one of them. Amity is trying to hold on to you. Uh, would that be contested? Um, uh, so you're currently grappled by Amity, right? Unless uh, you, you try to, to resist that grapple. Uh, if 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 Amity was trying to drag me up the steps, he would have resisted. Sure, uh, we can. Dragnar, are we doing like a grapple roll off? So here? did you did you try to drag him up the steps last turn, or you were just holding on to him so he didn't go anywhere? Holding on to him. All right. Would Metreon have resisted if it didn't seem like Amity was dragging him anywhere? No, it wouldn't have. Okay, in that case, it, you can try to make an action to break from the grapple. Okay, so, and that's a uh, athletics or check? Yes, and, uh, you're a choice of athletics or acrobatics against Amity's athletics. Okay, so acrobatics is going to be... You escape. Uh, 15, so yeah, he, he breaks free. Uh, you see his little devil tail twitching as he flees into one of those rooms. All right. Is this uh, another door? Or... So moving into this space, you see that the side corridor branches on either side, large standing stone slabs setting aside to lean against the walls, opening the way to a pair of dark, quiet crypts. The slab to the left is blank. The one to the right is etched with the name Walter Durst. And beyond, beyond like knowing the contents. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I, we've heard of Walter, right? Yeah. Um... So he full body shudders and starts to just kind of cower in the corner. And that's going to be his turn. All right. Very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Kiva, you're up next. All right. So um, this time seeing that there's a barrier between her, um, she's going to use um, her full action to dash and just get as far away as possible launching over that that pit trap that she fell into before. All right, very good. And that's her turn. All right, uh, with that, uh, Erthrandir, you're up. Okay, he's continuing his run, and then kind of looks at Amity. I, where's Metreon? Amity's, like, clutching her face, her tail wrapped around her neck. You know how we thought that the ghosts might betray us? You're shitting me. He ran that way. Oh, God damn it! And... <sighs> Would he do this? 
are we going to leave him behind? Or do, no. Do we have enough of a lead for us to go grab him? I can't hear it anymore. I think we've got a little bit. But if he resists any more, we go. But I, I, will, solemnly. I will need your help. We might need to tie him up. And yeah, he's going to use his action to dash. All right, uh, Amity can point to you that that's not. Yeah, Amity was pointing the, right the, the other way. Ah, thank you. He turns on his heel. Here. And then kind of turns to Metreon. Is it the ghost? Is it that ghost? Is it that fucking ghost? Uh, Metreon just uh, just adamantly shakes his head up and down, uh, almost like a little kid does when they're they're scared, but that they want to like confirm something. Oh, all right, Thorvald. Now you listen here. You don't get to do this to anybody. And if you keep doing this, then I swear the moment we are out of here, and we will get out of here, we're... My friend Amity there is pretty strong. We can make sure that you go upstairs. That the moment we're out of here, we're taking you to a priest, and we're getting you exercised. So I promise, leave my friend alone and let him either get out of him or let him do what he wants, or I will make personally sure that your little incorporeal ass gets booted as far as it can go. How does that sound? Make an intimidation check. I will. Nice. Come on. 10. Metreon shakes his head. You see tears seeping from the corner of his, of his eyes. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. All right. I know. And that's his turn. All right, very good. That is the end of Arthur's turn. Lillison, you're up. You are a, directly adjacent to this thing. What would you like to do? Lillison would like to dash. All right. It will take this attack of opportunity. Yep. Quite happily. That's a 22 to hit. Oof, okay. Um, I'm going to use my shield reaction. Uh, I know it won't protect against this, against this particular hit, but my AC is now 20. Okay. You take 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Holy Jesus. I'm on the ground. Uh, Jesus. Oh. God damn it. All right. That is the end of Alyssa's turn. Uh, Amity, you're up. Amity calls back down the hallway. Um, Lillison, when you get over here, the ghost tr gonna try to prevent you from going up. Don't listen to it. And, and she's gonna go over, not uh, unaware of what just happened. And uh, she's gonna try to grapple Metreon. Uh, that's an athletics check, presumably. Oh my god, that's a nine. I might roll lower. Uh, that's a 21. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amity's gonna use a bonus action to give um, Bardic Inspiration to Aetherndeer. Even if it means that whoever previously had bonus, uh, or had Bardic Inspiration doesn't have it anymore. If, if, if we hear it getting closer, we have I to know, go. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. End of turn. All right. That is the end of Amity's turn, which means the mound will go. It's going to use its action to slam Lillison. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. One oh. must die. One must die. Oh, she's still got her I shield spell up. All right, that's going to be against her unconscious body, which means it's made an advantage. Uh, so a 17. Does not hit. She'll be still there. <laughs> Woo! Yes. All right, it's going to attack a second time. Come on, come on. That's a 24. That does hit. 
All right, it slams into you, inflicting two automatic uh, failed saves. All right. That is the end of its turn, however. Metreon, you're up again. Um, resisting uh, the two of them trying to get uh, me out, I'm actually going to start backing into uh, this corridor a little bit more until I get up to the walls. Uh, Can I then... take an attack of opportunity? I just want to swap him with my tail. Uh, <laughs> you do not have access to him right now uh, due to the, oh, okay. cross, the wooden beams are set up. Um, and then when I get in, uh, you said that there were two other tombs, right? Or two other crypts, right? There are two crypts in this ho- corridor, yes. Oh, okay. And one you're was in the wall. other side. Yeah, you're in Walters right now. The other okay, one was... Okay, gotcha. Um, and, yeah, looking at... Uh, I start, like, I point my crossbow uh, at uh, Walters tomb, uh, just tearfully. He's not going to let us leave. They don't want us to. They they want one of us to die, and it's gonna be one of us. It doesn't have to be. We they they the people, the people down here were stupid. They they got they probably got killed by their own monster for all we know. That doesn't mean their trap is foolproof. Come on, please. And my turn. All right. Kiva, you're up. So would Kiva have heard, like, Lillison, would she have heard any of this uh, with the distance that she was at, like, knowing that Lillison is not behind her? Given the distance, I would say no. Motherfucker. In fact, you okay, see Lillison's that's... not following. But she might just be um, further back in the corridor. She might have taken a different branch. You don't know. You can't see her. Right, I can't. And so, fuck me. I'm going to have to do something that I don't want to do. She's going to keep running and assume that Lillison is behind her. So she's going to take the dash action again and get up as far as she can go. All right. And that's her turn. With that, Erythrindir, you're up again. Okay. So is Metreon pointing his crossbow at him or at the tomb? He was pointing it at the tomb, just sort of like gesturing to it. Like okay. that's the, that's the reason that we're in this. Okay. He looks between Amity and murmurs, I, "Do I try sense with him again, or do we just try and knock him out?" I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, me neither. I hate this so much. All right. He's he's going to step forward again. Thorn, I know you're in there. Listen to me. What is going to happen if your little passenger keeps going is that you're going to die. Your host is going to die. And then you're going to be alone again. We'll die too, because we're we'll we'll try and save him. But more to the point, you are gonna be alone. And the only way you aren't alone again is if you let him go up or let him go. These are your options. Now if you don't take any of those options, then we're leaving you. We are leaving you. And then you get to watch as your only friend in the world is subsumed beneath the maw of your parents' favorite plant monster. So get out now. Uh, he, I, Rose, he still has Rose. <laughs> it just, uh, uh, fuck, get it out of me, man. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, can, Earthen Deer, make another intimidation check. Uh, yes, you may certainly do so. Alrighty. Come on, yell at those kids. Can he get it at this at advantage? Because I really wanted him out. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use Amity's Bardic Inspiration. Come on, please. Fuck, uh, that's a thirteen. 
Fortunately, the DC was 11. Ah! eyes cool with tears, eyes going wide, looking up at you. And then he exhales slowly, the breath from his lips taking the form of a thick cloud of mist that forms the shape, the silhouette of a young boy, eyes glistening as his spirit lifts and floats silently in the crypt. He raises a hand to wipe his eyes and sobs, I just didn't want to be alone. And then slowly drifts away back into the wall behind Metreon and vanishes into the earth. Erythrindir does something very uncharacteristic and rush, rushes forward and hugs him. Oh, thank God. Metreon lets it happen. <laughs> it seems to be in a daze, <laughs> like unsure of what's even happened. Like time is irrelevant and even this house feels irrelevant right now. It's just uh, coming back to his senses and trying to process everything becomes, is, is kind of put him in a sort of momentary fugue state. Here, hey, come on, come on. I, I just walk with us, okay? We're gonna have to do some moving, but Amity and I will keep you safe. And he'll grab his hand and do his best to tug him along a bit. Yeah, he won't resist. Alrighty. And I believe that's my turn. All right. Very good. With that, Lilithan, I need you to make a death saving throw, please. I would love to. You have two failures. Ah! That is a five. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dark. Why is it so dark? Your eyes blur for a moment, just for a moment you watch the massive bulk of plant life spilling over you and then everything goes black and your mind goes blank and it's quiet and with that it's back to Amity's turn presumably Amity does not know about this um alright Let's go. Um, and he says, charging up to the staircase. Um, Kiva, Kiva, are you coming? Yes, yes, I'm coming. Go, go. All right, Amity starts running up the stairs. And just shivers as she does. Um, it's like locked in uncontrollable cold. It's... It's not, it's not done with us. And that's her turn. All right. You're not sure what else you hear, but you do hear the sound of something slowly making its way through the dark corridors toward you. You hear the bulk of the massive mound and you can feel the foundations of the house still shaking and trembling around you. Uh, it is Metreon's turn. Um, so I feel the, I, now that I'm back to my senses, I feel like the house shaking and everything uh, yeah. coming undone. Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing, uh, and get, coming back to my senses and seeing, uh, Aerith and Deer's hand in mine, uh, I instinctively, uh, draw it back and kind of give him a, this partially confused, uh, glance, brow kind of furrowed, but also not necessarily threatening, but just very like, uh, just confused at whatever things that, that everything that's happening, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, we need to get out of here. Come on, and he's gonna just use the the action movement and dash to get out of there. Actually, I'd say he only uses his action and movement. He wouldn't use the dash. He, he wants to at least keep up with everybody at this point. All right. But you are moving up the stairs. Very yes. good. Yes, yeah, uh, so I'd be like 20 that, feet up the stairs. Yeah. Kiva, you're up. So she does she hear the, the mound coming closer? It is coming closer, yes. And she doesn't hear anything of Lillison? She does not. Okay, Actually, she... make a perception check for me. Okay. I do not have good perception. That is a 19. Okay, maybe I do. This time you do. You close your eyes for a moment, listening around you for any sign of a listen. You've been hearing her footsteps behind you this whole time, and now you hear 
nothing. Just the shaking of the house and the roaring of the mound and the cracking of the house. No, 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 no. She's immediately going to start crying and um, and she is going to use her dash action to go up the stairs. All right. And as Kiva vanishes up the stairs, Aethrandu, you're the last one left on the in the dark corridor. What would you like to do? He's going to take a look back, realize she's not coming. I'm so sorry. And then he's going to run up the stairs. All right. And that is where we're going to take our break. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. god. One, one must die. It's true. Truth and advertising. I wish there weren't. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't too me. much die. We're, we're all going to be good now. Yeah, we just walk out of the house, right? Yeah, everything's good. That, that was our sacrifice. That's. Yeah, we're that's all good. Dead. Yeah, we, yeah. But definitely. Welcome to Fireside Chat, a short interlude with weekly features where I, your host Jeplukas, will be showcasing and interviewing prominent D&D creators. This week we are talking to Jack, a dungeon master who runs a radically altered version of Kosostrad called Barovia, California, which takes place in Southern California in the year 1983 and a player in Twice Bitten, who plays Metreon, about running a horror campaign in D&D. What does it mean to run a horror D&D campaign? How does it differ from a normal D&D campaign? D&D is a game designed to be played with heroic characters in mind. You fight for a cause, you get loot, you are celebrated as heroes and eventually become demigods or die valiantly. Horror, on the other hand, typically sees more internal transformations in protagonists. What happens when they dive into the dark unknown? What happens when they pass through and realize they're trapped there? Who will survive, and what will be left of them? For example, being kidnapped by Drow and taken down to the Underdark is one thing. The problem is easily presented. How do we escape? Horror muddies up that problem by complicating things in strange, unforeseen ways. What happens if you wake up and find the settlement you were held prisoner in is now completely abandoned, as if every drow had suddenly vanished without a trace, leaving behind only strange whispers in the shadows? The problem is still the same. You need to escape. But now you're faced with something else that may be well beyond your comprehension. Regular D&D campaigns and horror D&D campaigns are alike in that they both want to elicit strong feelings of excitement, suspense, and danger. Horror campaigns tend to differ because they also give parties permission to explore those feelings in less heroic ways. How should you introduce players to a horror campaign? Should they have different expectations from a normal one? The first question a GM should ask themselves when considering a horror game is what kind of horror do I want to run? Horror is a broad genre with various points of view, from grim and serious to campy or even more action-oriented. Once you've established the kind of tone you'd like to explore, bring it to your table. Bring along references to help articulate what you'd like to run, whether they're from film, TV, video games, books, and so on. Anything that will give players something that they can relate to will help them buy into the game. Which brings me to, arguably, the most important part of running a horror game, player buy-in. Player buy-ins are vital to telling any kind of tabletop story, since good role-playing requires a suspension of disbelief and willingness to engage in the story. An immersive horror experience poses the question to players, if you had these fantastic abilities, what would still manage to scare you? 
and how would you react? Vulnerabilities can sometimes be difficult to engage with for players because they often want to feel heroic, but even the most noble, allegedly fearless hero has something that they're afraid of. Mechanics and resources may also be drastically different from the traditional games they've played in. It helps to clear players in on that before playing so that their expectations align with the setting. In Curse of Strahd, access to healing magic is intentionally few and far between, and even death isn't an escape from Barovia, so players should tread carefully if they care about surviving. What are the strongest tools a dungeon master can use to make a horror campaign feel scary? Setting the mood is integral to running a truly scary campaign. That begins with the players agreeing to submit themselves to the setting, and DMs illustrating that setting the chilling effect. Even though you're using words to tell the story, showing, not telling, is a great technique to utilize. That means you don't rely on exposition to guide your players through a scene. You use unsettling descriptions and language to paint a horrific picture. Telling your party, you see zombies walking towards you, is very sterile. Instead, describe what their senses are telling them. They see gaunt humanoids shambling through low-hanging mist. They hear their dry, desiccated throats moaning in hunger. They can smell the fetid rot burning in their nostrils. And eventually, they'll feel the sting of the zombies' cracked yellow teeth tearing into their living flesh. Don't be afraid to take away some of these sensory cues too. Describing all the things they hear or smell but don't see can also stir up strong reactions. There are other components that you can bring to a game to set the mood. Music is the easiest way to do this. When selecting music, however, it is important to pick a soundtrack that the whole table can relate to. I know that track from the video game you love feels scary to you, but if no one else at your table has played it, the context might be lost and with it, the immersion. Picking sounds that also match the tone of the game you're playing is important. If you're playing a gritty, grim, dark survival horror game, go with more sparse, ambient compositions to convey a sense of isolation. If your Curse of Strahd game is rich in melodrama, go for more gothic orchestral tracks that punctuate the drama. Or, if you're like me and you've decided to pay homage to the campier horror of the 1980s, Synthwave is always a safe bet. Other things can help set the mood as well, whether it's props and handouts, environmental sound effects, or even lighting. Finally, know when to pull back. Relentless torture, terror, and torment are fun, but also tend to either exhaust players or make them numb to the setting. Sprinkling in moments of calm or even levity can make the horrors that await them that much more upsetting. What elements of Curse of Strahd make for good horror? One of my favorite things about Curse of Strahd is that it gives DMs the opportunity to present classic monsters that most players will easily recognize. The vampire, the werewolf, the witch, in a way that they're able to interact with them, and even see them as characters rather than just creatures. The module also sets up many unsettling scenarios that can affect player characters in different ways. At its heart, Curse of Strahd is a survival horror story for players. The gothic horror of the module helps to ground everything, making it feel more intimate and emotional than arguably any other D&D module. As mentioned earlier, resources aren't as accessible as they are in traditional modules, and resource management makes the game that much more tense. The book also has a guide to adding creepy moments with the marks of horror if you feel like you need to amp things up in some areas of the module. They help guide you through not only embellishing a scene with that extra dash of scary, but they can also serve to provide subtle reminders to players that where they are just isn't safe. Use these sparingly outside of directly haunted places, since you want to keep them on their toes, and using the marks too much can lose their effectiveness due to overexposure. What are some tips for running horror safely? Making sure players feel safe playing any game is important, but it's especially important in settings that are meant to tap into fear and prey on the vulnerabilities of the characters. The golden rule of running a horror game in my opinion is make your players unsettled, but don't make them uncomfortable. Session zeros are great to go over not just your standards for the game, but boundaries and triggers that the players may have. If you're running a game for a new group, or are introducing your table to their first horrific setting, it's important to understand what horrors your players are okay with experiencing. Tabletop role-playing games are immersive, so anything that may be upsetting to your players is amplified because they aren't just the audience. They are in that world, and they trust you to guide them. There are also a variety of ways that players can vocalize their discomfort. You can go around the table and ask players what horrors they don't want to encounter, but if they're not comfortable talking about it openly, there are other options. You can present a list of different potentially triggering themes to your players, and they can answer either privately or anonymously by making a poll. 
If you're running a horror game for players who you've gamed with for a while, the approach may be more casual. Either way, respect for known boundaries is a must. Just as it's important for DMs to reassure their players that their boundaries will be respected, it's equally important for players to be forthcoming about what they don't want to experience. There are many safety tools at the player's disposal. The stoplight system allows for more flexibility and lets the table know elements that are red are off limits, yellow areas should be proceeded with caution, and green elements are okay to go. Lines and veils similarly allow for flexibility. Where lines are hard nose, and veils allow for sensitive elements to be a part of the story without explicitly delving into them. The common element between these systems is that clear communication is necessary for them to be effective. A good DM won't pry into why something is uncomfortable, because saying, this makes me uncomfortable, can we avoid it, is enough. If a DM can't respect that, it's probably not the table for you. Lastly, aftercare, aftercare, aftercare. Remind your party at the end of the game that they're back safely from whatever horrors you've inflicted upon them. Check in with them, and make sure they're okay, even if you've been playing with them for a long time. Make sure to bring them out of whatever dark and demented setting you've inflicted upon them, and remind them that it's only a game. If you think your hometown has problems, you haven't spent nearly enough time in the village of Barovia. Over the years, their taste for human flesh had only grown. The vampire spawn, the undead cult, the werewolf den. I just think we can do a little better here. Grab our shovels and we're gonna add some depth to help you run your best Curse of Strahd. Strahd, 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 Strahd. Possible. You're welcome. He flies into a fit of rage that is unparalleled. There's child abuse galore through this thing. He's been nailed to the wall with very long iron spikes, and I imagine it's been a very uncomfortable time for him. You see, in tracking a monster, one always needs proper bait.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Curse of Strahd Twice Bitten. Hope you had an enjoyable break. Uh, before we begin, just a few minor announcements. First, a quick shout out to our continuing virtual tabletop sponsor for this campaign, Foundry VTT. They've been very supportive of uh, this campaign. Uh, they're a great uh, virtual tabletop platform, and I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, it's what we're hosting this entire campaign on. And I think you've already seen some assets. We're going to have a few more today that you might enjoy. And um, it's a very powerful platform. So they're great. Go, go give them a look. Um, secondly, uh, Twice Bitten After Dark, the uh, post-game discussion show, will be returning this Monday. You all can join us on this channel, twitch.tv slash rcurseofstrawed, this Monday, September 7th at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific for a dive into character motivations and character developments, uh, some behind the curtains game design discussion, and some conversations about uh, Curse of Strahd and upcoming D&D content, as well as Q&A uh, with the audience and cast. Uh, before I move on, just a quick apology to everyone who's watching uh, live on Twitch for some of the technical, diffi technical difficulties we've been facing. Uh, our producer, Zio, is looking at getting those fixed. Uh, we'll see what goes on. We might have to end a bit early today, but we will do our best to truck through as best we can. Um, so, with that said, uh, I think, Twy, you had a few things to go through. Yeah. So, mostly Twitch things, which I will attempt to say with vigor, despite my heart being in a deep, dark hole. So, we've just... So, yeah, as of last week, we have just hit Twitch Affiliate. And we've already gotten several new subscribers. Thank you so much to everybody who helped us get to that milestone. And to everybody who decided to pitch in to support our work. In addition, we have just hit September, which means Twitch's September promotion is starting. That means that the first subscription you buy is only four dollars. The first month of your subscription is only four dollars if you buy it this month. And you get a steeper discount if that continues. It's pretty nice. And right now, the biggest perk for subscribing is access to our Twitch chat emotes. We've got one already working with two more are on the way waiting to be approved. And we will be looking to get more of those as we get more subscribers and get more options, but we hope the one you enjoy the ones we've got so far. And at the moment, we're looking to devote 100% of any sub funds we get to the stream and the Curse of Strahd community. If this changes, we will let y'all know, but for the moment, that's how things stand. And for that, Jack? Yes, uh, so uh, if you are watching us on Twitch right now or are visiting our Twitch page, uh, we've got some updated uh, about graphics. Uh, very fancy. Uh, and uh, they say everything that you really need to know. Uh, we've got some channel info on uh, what we are, uh, Curse of Strahd, uh, subreddit is and and what this whole stream is about and why we're doing it um we have some codes of conduct you know just the general things just you know don't be a dick uh and we've got a little bit of an uh, infographic on twice bitten which uh, just kind of uh, reminds you who the cast and the dungeon master are uh and uh, music credits too you know we've got some amazing music lined up uh and you've already gotten to hear some of it um but we managed to pull in some amazing uh composers to contribute music to this um and so we've got a whole list there and if you click on that i believe it uh it clicks through to the full credits um so check that out uh, we also have links to our social channels so if you're not following us on twitter discord youtube or following the new podcast, uh, be sure to click those buttons down below and they will take you to those directly and you can subscribe. And speaking of social media, uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Serena. Hey y'all, it's your social media guru. Um, reminding that our YouTube channel is youtube.com backslash C backslash our curse of Strahd. Um, all of our VODs are up there posted uh, within 48 hours after our stream dates. Um, we're also going to be posting fireside chats um, eventually we'll get After Dark up there too. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And if you've missed any previous episodes, if this is the first stream you're joining us, oh my God, I'm so sorry that this is the stream you're tuning in on. Um, but you can catch up on all of our episodes at tinyurl.com backslash twice bitten. Um, if you're watching us live on Twitch right now, please don't forget to hit the follow button to get updates and notifications whenever a new episode goes live. Um, and thank you again to all of our subs who have contributed so far. 
Um, our Twitter account, Twice Bitten COS. Um, if you like what you see and you want to get in on the conversation, please um, at us at Twice Bitten CRS or use the hashtag Twice Bitten COS. And you can submit artwork, ads, and memes uh, to our email address. It's the same thing, twicebittencos at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, Serena. And just a quick note uh, regarding uh, what Jack mentioned about the social buttons uh, regarding the Discord. That links to the uh, official r slash Curse of Straw Discord server, I believe. Uh, so if you are a player of Curse of Straw or if you're not a Curse of Straw DM, uh, I recommend against uh, pressing that. Uh, we might look to get a twice bidden server at some point, but for now we're uh, uh, mooching off of the very friendly, uh, welcoming r slash Curse of Straw server. So if you are a Curse of Straw player or... Uh, not a Curse of Strahd DM, I will warn you, uh, there do be dragons at the other end of that link. Uh, otherwise, Kaya, do you just have a few things to finish us off? Yes. Um, as was previously um, announced, we did release our podcast last week. Um, it lives at anchor.fm slash twice bitten, um, but it is also syndicated to many different platforms, including Spotify, uh, Google Play and Apple Podcasts has now picked it up. So uh, do check it out, please. Uh, we already have almost 500 listens, which is amazing, um, considering that, you know, we only started really publishing uh, the podcasts a week or two ago. Um, thank you so much, everybody who has taken the time to listen. Um, so there you can find the Fireside Chats as their own separate little series as well as each episode broken up into part one and part two for length reasons. Um, and each episode is posted 12 days after the original Twitch air date. Uh, that is because I take the time to go through and um, just do a sound edit, uh, removing any long pauses, uh, stray noises, things like that uh, for the best possible listening experience. And speaking of listening experiences, you can now, if you scroll down and take a look at the wonderful layout that Jack has made for us, you can see the short list of all of our um, music credits, all of the video game companies and independent composers who have so graciously allowed us to use their music on our stream. And if you click through on that music panel, you can um, that is a link to the full list of every single track that we are using. Uh, this week, we have added a um, composer to our repertoire that is Guild of the Black Crow. They do amazing ambience soundtracks. Uh, so if you are a Curse of Straw DM or if you just like to have, uh, you know, ambient noises of uh, carriages rattling down the road or things like that, uh, please do check them out. Great. And just a quick correction, I believe it's anchor.fm slash twice dash bitten, right? Not yes, slash twice bitten. dash. Yes, twice dash bitten. Awesome. Thank you, Kaya. Uh, and with that, thank you to everyone for sticking around and for your patience. And I think that's all we've got for now. So without any further ado, let's dive right back in. So each of you, the four of you, makes your way running up the stairs. You, as you make your way upward, you can feel the house's foundations trembling and shaking as you race up the steps, fighting through grasping cobwebs and enclosing walls. You burst out of the top floor and feel the trembling and shaking of the house subside, the groaning stopping, the swaying stopping, and the foundations coming to rest, only to find yourselves hacking and wheezing as a thick, vile smog invades your lungs from the room beyond. The room up ahead at the top of the stairs you can see is now filled with a billowing cloud of dark smoke, each whirl of gas swirling with the image of a screaming face. From what little you can see of the walls around you, their faded wallpaper finished has now aged and cracked, as if left to rot for centuries. The wood of the inner walls of the house now seem rotted and brittle, ready to crumble at the barest touch. Beneath the surface of the wallpaper and molding, you can now see hundreds of tiny shapes moving like tiny twitching muscles. From your left, in the direction of the room's exit, you can hear the sound of spinning, whirling blades. I will need everyone to roll initiative again, please. Uh, okay, cool. Why not? It's just, just, just fun. Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> Twelve. All right. Very good. Uh, with that. And 
All right, seven for Earth Rendir. Uh So Kiva and Metreon, you may act on the same initiative. Uh, what would you like to do? Kiva's uh, going, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, no, uh, by all means. <laughs> I just gonna say she's gonna keep fucking running. So she's gonna take her uh, exactly. dash action and just get the fuck out of here. Same here. All right, so, uh, one second, one second. Hold your horses, kids. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right, all so. This, all this smog. You all these make your way things. through the smog, and you can hear it all around you. And as you do, making your way forward toward the door, you reach forward for a moment, and then you watch a silver blade slashing through the air. You can hear the sound of spinning, slashing scythe blades that now seem to fill the entirety of the door, just barely visible beyond the edge of the smog. The entire door seems to have been filled, the doorway itself replacing with a constantly swirling mess of slashing silver blades. Oh, I God. I don't, know who, I don't know who fucking made this house, but whoever it is, I want to kick them in the fucking arse. Agreed. Is there any way to, like, duck past the blade, or is it sort of, like, covering the entire doorway? Uh, so the blades are covering the entire doorway. If you want, you can try to study it to see if there's any pattern to the movement or try to tumble through quickly, which might be pretty difficult. They're moving pretty fast. Um, but the blades do appear to fill a large part of the doorway. But you can feel yourself already hacking and wheezing. The gas is beginning to fill your lungs. What would you like to do? Uh, Metreon's... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. You go first. <laughs> Metreon is going to... Is this like a chair here in front of him? Like uh, a chair coming? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take like that up. It's like a lumpy armchair. Yeah, he's gonna take that up and lift it as much as he can and try and like shove it into the doorway. And uh, he wants to basically test how sharp the blades are and possibly maybe even like jamming the doorway. All right, you shove it through using your free uh, object interaction to do so. The chair is carved up into splinters and smithereens that go flying, forcing you to duck aside to avoid being hit. It's carved hard part in an instant. Holy fuck. I, All right. God um, damn it. Kiva's going to try to go through. <laughs> All right. Um, I will need Kiva to make a uh, acrobatics check, please. Oh God. Okay. Ah, uh, that's a twenty-two. Oh my God. Okay. <sighs> whether, whether based on gut instincts or sheer adrenaline or seeing at just the right moment a space free of metal, you tumble nimbly through and emerge on the other side unharmed. Okay, so can she get, does she have the rest of her movement to do stuff? Yes. Okay, so she's going to You emerge and you can see that the other doors of the other rooms have all been replaced by slashing scythe blades. All of them fuck, just fuck, fuck, swirling fuck, fuck. masses of rusted metal. This room seems clear of the fog, but the others you can see filled with choking dark smoke coming from several of the other rooms. Metreon starts to like hype himself up. He, he gets, uh, he moves in front of the door, looking at it like uh, sort of like, jogging in place, uh, just you know trying to hype himself. Uh, and he's going to go ahead and try to jump through too. All right, make an acrobatics check. Fourteen. You tumble through for a moment. You think you've got it made clear, and then you feel something painful slice across the back of your shoulders, contorting your muscles in pain as you feel something. Slick, sliding down the back of your neck. God, oh, fucking uh, hell! You suffer ten points of slashing damage. Oh fuck! Yeah, it's a deep cut. The blood is just racing down this uh, oversized leather jacket. Uh, he's gripping his shoulder in, in just absolute agony right now. Oh fuck, man! Oh, keep moving. All right. With that, uh, you make it through the other side, however, if you'd like okay. to your movement. Yeah, he's gonna... Um, and there's no visible windows in this particular corridor, is there? There is one. Kiva, as you turn, you see the window that you came through. The one that moves from the third floor back into the attic. And as you turn, you see, for a moment beyond, gray skies free of fog and mist. You can see clouds and what seems to be a tall mountain rising up in the distance. And then as you lunge toward it, you watch as bricks from the walls filter into place, slamming over top of the window, blocking it up. 
Oh my god. The window was sealed shut. All right, we have to try to bust through this wall at the bottom of the staircase. We just have to try. Oh my god. We're gonna die here. <laughs> Fuck. Not without a fight, we're not. And that's our turn, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, very good. Uh, Amity, you're up. Amity turns to Ether and Deer. The, the, the ghost isn't going to let Lillison go up the stairs. I, Amity, Lillison's dead. <laughs> Amity just turns away and starts running. Oh god, there's this door with the swinging scythe blade. Um, I, is there like any way around this? I guess I guess I mean, I'm gonna um, try examining for either some other way out of the room or like a pattern in the blade, as you suggested. So you could try to inspect the blades for a while, but you could feel the smog choking up around you. You're not sure you'll have enough time. You think that it's gonna start burning your lungs pretty soon. The walls look pretty soft and brittle. You could try to smash through them, but otherwise there's no immediate uh, escape to the room. Uh, I saw what happened to Metreon. I'm going to try to smash through a wall. I'm, I'm tail whipping the wall to my north. All right. Uh, this would be... Uh, you don't. Do you have any weapons? Um, I, I have a rolling pin, but like... <laughs> hey, that uh, give me a, a roll to hit using your strength modifier. Um, and... I right. believe you're proficient with improvised weapons. Or no, you're not. I think there's a feat that does that. 14 to hit anyway. All right. Uh, roll 1d4 and add your strength modifier. Or I'll double check the rules on that. Okay, that is going to be four. Um, All right. Um, let me just check something real so quick. It, yes. It 1D, might just be uh, one plus strength. It's... No, it's 1d4 okay. plus strength. Cool. Then it's four. All right, total. very good. Uh, great. So, uh, with four damage, you slam at the wall to the room, denting it harshly. You feel it, you know, starting to crumble and fall away. And you can almost see through the other, the other side. You can see the wallpaper shifting and twisting. And you can see tiny black furred shapes in the interior. But you don't slam all the way through. You think all it right, would take another good hit to get to the other side. I'm going to use the rest of my movement to duck back down into the staircase and take a big gasp of breath that I was holding. We can get through the walls. Okay. Tell you through here. That's my turn. All right. Uh, very good. That is the end of Amity's turn. Erthrandir, you're up. All right. So, taking this and not liking the look of those scythe blades, he's going to nod to her and then step out into the room pull his pocket knife again from his pocket and just frantically slash at the wall, seeing if he can do any... Yeah, no, better option than fire. That's a that's a bad plan. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna slash All right, roll it. All right. Six. The wall only has AC five. Roll damage. All right. This would be one d four plus your dex mod. All right, seven damage. All right, you puncture through the edge of the foundations, tearing them away, and leaving the wall free to traverse through. All right, he is going to... However, as you do, you hear squeaking and chittering and squealing and pouring forth from the walls in the space beside you. You see a massive swarm of black-furred rats pour forth, emerging in the space beside it. Oh, fuck. Go to hell! All right. He is going to... Sort of yell back to Amity. Hey, we've got rats. Be careful and uh, just move as quick as you can. And he's going to give her a quick die of bardic inspiration. And then he's going to dive through the hole. All right. Very good. Um, with that, as you dive through the hole. Hmm. 
Lillison. Yes. You feel cold. You are cast adrift in darkness. You can see shadows and mists swirling around you and in the distance, you can hear voices whispering. Their murmurs too unintelligible to make out. You become aware suddenly that you are floating, but when you look down, you cannot see your body, nor can you feel it. Instead, there is only a deep, abiding emptiness. You realize once more that you are cold and growing colder. Around you, the darkness swirls, congealing. The mist grows thick and the shadows writhe as if beckoning you in every direction. The void breathes and you feel a presence surrounding you. The first presence is joined by a second, then two more. The shadows breed and multiply until they consume your awareness, devouring every inch of your senses like a ravenous beast. Then, together, the uncountable horde of presences speaks with one voice that is somehow both a whisper and a shout. The entity has been cleaved from its vessel. They can yet be rejoined. Not all that was will be again. But the entity is not yet fully formed. It can be touched. It can be changed. Breath can be returned to flesh if the entity wills it. The soul must consent. Does the soul consent? There is a moment, an infinite pause of waiting and expectation. The winter star is cold. The winter star is all seeing. The winter star does not break. The winter star is cold. The winter star is all seeing. The winter star does not break. I want to go back. There's a murmuring. The soul consents. Another. The soul consents. And then all together in a terrible rising chorus, a cacophony of voices infinite and terrible, hollow and empty, with not an ounce of humanity or even diabolical intent to them. No darkness, merely voids. They speak, the soul consents. And your eyes fly open. Your chest expands as you inhale for breath. And you're staring once more up at the ceiling of the dungeon below the Durst house. All of your hit points and spell slots are restored. I need you to roll 1d4 for me. That is a three. All right. Something is strange. You feel cold. The cold that you felt in the void hasn't returned. It's still all around you. And it feels almost deep within you. You can feel yourself shivering and shaking and trembling. And whatever these chills are, they're not leaving. But you take in another breath again, a blessed breath. And the air tastes disgusting and dark. But it's air. I'll need you to roll initiative, please. Okay. And with that, as you slowly sit up around you, you hear the sound of sludge grinding against stone, of bulk moving through corridors, and the house around you has stilled. And in the darkness below the stairs, as you slowly sit up in place, you can see the massive bulk of the mound, the dark silhouette, vanish around the corner and move out of sight. Okay, that is a seven on initiative. I'm not sure which map I'm on. No worries, we will handle that in a moment. Okay. So, 
with that, uh, just remember that uh, you go, I believe, last in initiative. So with that, I believe you are all, oh yes, you were escaping. Kiva, you're up. The stairs below are clear. The, br the wall window was bricked up once more. Metron is behind you. Aerithrond, you're plunging into the room. There's a massive swarm of rats flooding forth from the destroyed wall. What would you like she to do? She is barreling down those stairs to the boarded up um, wall, and she's going to try to to um, bust through it and see if that's a way out. Oh. All right, uh, Kiva, you plunge down the stairs to the next, to the place below. Peering through, you can see on either side of you now. Now, with swirling masses of slashing scythe blades, as well as above. The wall ahead of you is entirely brittle and rotted. And to the left and right, to the left, you can see a massive uh, cloud of fog and smog filling the room with smoke. I think you can just barely make out the details of the uh, nursemaid's chamber. To the right of you, you can barely make out the balcony. Clear of fog, it seems, but once more covered by this swirling curtain of blades. What would you like to do? Okay, so there's blades to the front of her and the nursemaid's suite to the back of her. Yes? Just to clarify? Correct. Okay, she's not gonna... And ahead fucking... of you, it just ends at a rotted wall. Okay, so she's going... <laughs> she's gonna try to go through the blades again. She's gonna try... All right, uh, are you going left or right? Balcony or nursemaid's room? To the balcony. All right, give me an acrobatics check. That's an 18. You plunge through fearlessly and tumble through on the other side. Not even a nick on your skin. Okay, so um, she is going to use whatever movement she has left um, using the dash action to get the fuck downstairs. All right. Uh, as you make your way toward the balcony, you can see just barely, looking down over the banister, you can see a thick cloud of choking dark smog and smoke that seems to be billing up from the lower lower corridor. Uh, Whatever it is, the lower the second the second floor corridor below you seems to be full of it. It's crawled almost fully halfway up the length of the staircase. So using the last um, 30 feet of her movement, would that clear her the second floor staircase to get her to the first uh, floor? Let's see, you have 30 feet of movement left? Yeah. Uh, looking down, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, you could get down to the second floor. And looking down, you're not sure how far the car almost smog goes. It seems to go all the way down to the first floor. I mean, the first floor, she's, that's the only way out, so she's going to try sure. to... So you can make your way it. down yeah. to the second floor, but you know that the smog is there. Yeah, she's going to say go with it. All right. And that's her turn. Um, All right. Could you move me on to the... Uh, so I followed her down in, in as much so, as... Uh, mm -hmm. In as much as, you know, I, I'm not actually going through the blade yet, but I can't see the floor. Did you put my token there? You're good. I'll move you right there. So, making your way down. You're just in time to see Kiva plunge through the blades on the right-hand side of the staircase. What would you like to do? So, I, I know that in the master bedroom... Uh, this is the floor of the master bedroom, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, and I know that there's a balcony over there, so I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and head that way at first. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Go for it. And so are there blades in the mat, like, like on the doors uh, heading into so the So did you bedroom? make your way through there? Through oh, I'm sorry. I thought, it's no. So the, the, it just let me through. It didn't yes. let me go. So, um, okay. If you want to roll for it. Yeah. Um, um, it's full of blades to your right hand side. Yeah. Uh, fuck it. I mean, what am I going to do? Uh, I take it I can't disengage with it. <laughs> no. Um, afraid not. Yeah. Yeah. Although, let me double check uh, something real quick. Uh, the dodge action does give you dexterity saving throws advantage, but this is not a dexterity saving throw, it's an acrobatics check. 
if you want, you can take your time to try to study the gaps in the blaze to see if you can predict a pattern, but it might take a little while. Um, no, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna make an acrobatics check, fuck it. He's, he wants to get out of there. All right, roll for it. Six. You plunge through, successfully getting to the other side, but once more, they slash and cut at you from every direction. You take 11 points of slashing damage. I'm down. Kiva, you hear Metreon cry out and something thud against the balcony over over your head. Fuck, 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 fuck. All right, uh, with that, that is the end of Metreon's turn. Next up is Amity. Okay, uh, well, she starts off, um, and presumably can go through... Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, I see the rat now. <clears throat> uh, which, which, which way? She says to Ethan. Ethan through here. the hole, please. Don't try the blades. Right. Um, sorry, is there another hole past, like, that's not the one I just went through? What? Or did you, were you I, just I referring to the hole I just went through? Yeah, I, I was. I, I got confused. My apologies. Okay, got it. Um, Down the stairs, I think. All right. Um, I think that's this way. One, two, three, four, five. And um, I'm just going to run. I might take an AOO from a rat here. All right. It will happily take its attack of opportunity against you. So with that, the swarm of rats starts toward you, biting and snapping at your feet. Uh, that's a 10 to hit. Uh, that will not hit, barely. All right. Phew. Okay. Earthen dear, follow me. We've got this. Let's stick together, and she'll pass him a die of bardic inspiration. Teamwork. Teamwork. Uh, and go down the stairs. All right. Very good. Uh, that is... Do you have any more movement after that? Uh, yeah, I, I'll just do it on the next scene. Uh, that'll be the end of my turn after I do that movement. All right, you are now on the third floor. Wonderful. And yeah, uh, that is... Or how do I get out of the staircase? Oh, I have exactly yeah, so, enough movement to now be standing over Metreon's uh, collapsed body. So if you want to move there, you have to pass through blades. Oh, there's blades you there. Tell, you got I cut see. up pretty well by them. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to freeze there. All right. Very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Erthrandir, you're up next. All right. He's going to take advantage of the rat's distraction to follow Amity down the stairs. One, two, right. three, four, five, six, and then he's going to dash. All right. You find yourself on the staircase below, just behind Amity. All right. You can see on either side, she's flanked by spinning, whirling scythe blades. What would you like to do? Uh, yeah. Can he see Metreon? Uh, from here, just around the corner, yes, you can see his unconscious body on the ground. You can just see like the lo his lower half of the body. You are going to owe me so much money for saving your miserable ass. And then he's going to dive through the blades. All right, give me an acrobatics check. 18. You plunge through easily, emerging on the other side. All right. He's going to step beside him, and that's going to be his turn. All right. And with that, you see Kiva's silhouette vanishing down the stairs through the smog out of sight. K Kiva, somebody's hurt. We got it. Ah, to hell with it. That's his turn. All right. Very good. Uh, that is the end of Aerithrandir's turn. Listen, what are you doing? Oh, you awaken where once am more I? on the basement floor. If you go to Durst House B1F, you are in the same place where you died. Okay, I will take a leisurely walk through the basement. Actually, no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make a leisurely dash through the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Out for a jog. <laughs> What a right. I, uh, yeah, I think that's about as far as I can get. All right. 
Beautiful. Uh, Kiva, you're up next. Uh, you are, as you move down into the smog, you feel it filling into your lungs. You feel yourself choking and hacking and coughing. Um, I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Uh -huh. That's a nine. I'm afraid the DC was 10. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That will be five points of poison damage. She's down. You hear Kiva's body hit the ground on the bottom step of the third floor staircase. Hate my life. Hate every bit of it. All right, Metron, give me a death save, please. You know it. Nine. One failure, mark that off. Amity, you're up. All right, I'm going to try to study the blades to find a pattern in them. All right, it'll take around a minute to get a sense of it, so you're just going to wait here? Oh, what, the entire minute? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, there's no time. I'm going to hope that uh, Aerithrin Deer's um, praise will let me through, I'm, and that's going to be an acrobatics check, correct? Yes, please. Uh, 20. <laughs> You dive right through, ah. missing them entirely. Awesome. Uh, and then I'm going to weigh my options and use my action to cast Heroism on Metreon. Start of his turn, he will be up so with temporary HP. Temporary hit points do not take the place of normal hit points. It would not raise him from his unconsciousness. Oh, they, they don't make you be not unconscious? No. Oh. They do not. Oh. Well... You can okay. make a medicine check um, to stabilize him, but... Yeah, I'm going to make a medicine check then. That's my action. I guess we can drag him around. Um, so that is going to be, as far as medicine goes, a 13 to stabilize. All right, very good. I believe that is the end of your turn. Uh, 13 does succeed. Oh, yes, correct. Uh, Metron is now stable, by the way. Yes, thank you. Uh, are we going down to the bottom? Or are we going to jump off the balcony? I'm thinking. I'm What's thinking balcony. Kiva went down there and went out like a light. I, if someone as tough as she is, we are not making it. All right. Will you be able to drag her out of there? Probably. Uh, I have no idea. All right. Amity just drags Metreon um, north at half speed, of course. Uh, towards the balcony zone. I don't know. That's the turn. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, Aerithrandir, you're up. Okay. Does he think he could feasibly drag Kiva any distance, or is she too heavy? Uh, you could probably drag her up the steps if you duck down. Then he's going to do that. 5, 10, 15, 20, and then he starts dragging her until she's clear of the smog. All right, you're able to drag her, you know, moving, you know, kind of dragging her back slowly at, at around half speed or so until she's clear of the smoke. Okay, and that'll be his turn because he had to dash to do that. All right, uh, with that... You hear the sound of angry squeaking coming from above. And you see for a moment the rats lingering at the base of the stairs, chittering at you from beyond the sides. They pause and linger on the other side, swarming like a cloud of black fur, but do not proceed through the sides. Uh, I believe that is the end of their turn. Uh, Lilison, you're up again. Okay. Lilison's going to keep running. Uh, almost to the stairs now, but that is all her uh, act, uh, movement and dash. All right, very good. And as you make your way dashing swiftly toward the stairs, you feel a lightness in your spirit and soul. You 
you feel like a cloud has been lifted from your, from your thoughts. Uh, you didn't realize it at first, but after your resurrection, you are no longer possessed by Rose's spirit. Thank goodness. All right. That is the end of your turn. Kiva, you're up. Uh, do I have to make a death saving throw? Yes, please. How do I do that? Okay, hold on. There we go. Oh, no. That, <laughs> that uh, is a four. That's one failure, I'm afraid. Sounds good. All right. Uh, and then, DM, do I have to make a roll on the lingering injuries table? Uh, yes. Uh, you, we will do that uh, once you are conscious. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, uh, Metreon, you are stable. No need from you. Um, Amity, you're up. I know you're nasty rats, she says to the rats. But don't bother trying to come get us so that those blades will slash your tails off. Um, because Speak With Animals is still active after all. And then she drags Metreon. Uh-oh, the next room has some... Uh, opening the doors, it seems to have some uh, smoke in it. Hmm. But that's okay. Uh, because with the dash action, even at half move, Pause. she can... That door uh -oh. is filled with sides as well. No. Both of them. So let's push you back here. Wait, sorry, this to this room? Yes, every door is replaced with sides. Oh my god. That's too many scythes. Okay, you know what? <laughs> That's just so many scythes. Uh, I think we might have a minute. Amity will start studying the blades. There's no immediate right. danger that she knows of. All right, very good. That is the end of your turn. Uh, Aerithrin Beer, you're up. He is going to uh, see- I'm trying to stable, but Kiva does not seem to be. Yep, he is going to try and, like, you know, see if he can roust her. All right, make a medicine check. 16. Woo! Hacks coughing once more. Um, and, you know, you do your best to resuscitate her as best you can, expelling the black smoke from her lungs, getting her breathing again. She exhales slowly and resumes normal breathing. She is stable. Amity, would you... What's the balcony looking like? Hold on. If, if you could just help me figure out how we can get through these blades. I mean, especially with dragging people through them. Yeah, I, uh... Hold on. You think... Do you think you... You think you've scared off the rats enough? They're not gonna try anything. Uh, I think so. All right. Then yeah, I... Unless the smoke starts rising, I think we should be all right for the moment. And he's going to drag her a little bit further up so she's not directly kind of on the stairs. And then he's going to join her in trying to figure out if these it's possible to disable these things. All right, but I believe that's your action. So with that, yep. uh, the rats will continue uh, just lingering where they are, not doing much. Well, listen, you're up again. Okay, going to take the final little bit to the stairs. Okay, I make it to the bottom of the stairs with 25 feet of movement, so I'm going to spend the rest just going up uh, all four floors. Gotcha. All right, sounds good. With that, that is the end of your turn. Just as you emerge at the top of the staircase, uh, Kiva is stable, nothing needed from you. Uh, Metron is stable. Amity, what are you, you're still studying? Yeah, I think Lillison's the only one actively moving, probably. All right, Arthur Deer, are you going to be doing anything? Uh, studying and keeping an eye on the rats. All right, very good. Uh, in that case, let's return to uh, Lillison. All right. Lillison's going to pause at the top of the stairs, her eyes widening as she sees the boiling smoke in this room. Uh, a wide, very humorless grin spreads over her lips. And she's going to walk in and cautiously take half a breath. All right. It feels like choking, acrid smog. Um, let me check something real quick. Do you have any... All right. 
I think that's all I've got for now. Are you going to uh, keep moving? Uh, yes. Looking around, seeing the gap in this wall and the scythes that for some reason are going on. Uh, she's going to run through the gap in the wall. All right. Very good. And as she does, uh, Amity and Erythrindir, you hear the sound of, you hear the rat suddenly squeak and chitter and then turn, reversing their way up the stairs. What? Bounding up the staircase, and suddenly, a moment later, you hear footsteps. What the hell is that? Okay, glancing over at the uh, bricked-up window, she's going to wander over to it and, like, cautiously push against the bricks to see if they'll move. Quite unmovable. All right. Uh... I think I've done enough. I, I think that's all my move. Um, would you roll that the things I've done constitute an action, or...? I don't think they would, no. All right, down the stairs. All right, you make your way down the stairs, only to find on the left-hand side a number of slashing, slashing sides, and just before them on the staircase, a swarm of rats bubbling up to meet you. All right, that is my turn. All right, uh, with that, uh, Amity, you hear footsteps coming down the stairs as you continue studying. Do you continue looking at the patterns? Yeah, but we'll also call out, who is it? No response. No response? Okay. Ethan, do you make sure there's not anything crazy going on behind us? We might have to bust through this wall. I gotcha. Although if that's the mount, if that's the Shamblin mound, then I think that's it, darling. So it, so it's not the Shambling Mount. I does right, right footsteps. It, yeah, no, that would be more of a Erthrun deer makes a humorless clunk, 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 clunk noise. Nah, that uh, that might be that might be Lawson. Amity's still desperately looking for an opening in the blades. That's it for her turn. All right, anything from Erthrun deer? Uh, can he see where the rats went? Peeking in, yes, you can kind of see them. You can, you can see that they're half up on the stair. They appear to be lunging towards something on the higher landing. Whoever you are, you should probably get out of the way of this. And he's going to let out a... He's going to draw another glyph in the room, in the, another glyph in the air, and let out a moat of reddish-purple fire at the rats. All right. Are you casting this from this current position? Uh... I'm not going back through the blades. No, but I mean, are you backing up or are you attacking with disadvantage? I'm assuming this is Firebolt. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll back up. I'll back up a tad. Okay. Joint. Very good. Uh, the they do have half cover, so it's plus two to their AC. Got but you. I do roll that for me. <laughs> that's a seven. No dice. Unfortunately, the seven flies wide. It does not connect. All right. That's his turn. All right, very good. That is the end of your turn. The rats will take their turn. Uh, Lillison, they spill up the stairs toward you, lunging and biting toward you. Okay. That's going to be a four to hit, which I believe misses. That misses. All right, Lillison, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, assuming that I can't just get past them, because that's not how this works, uh, I am going to do a big old acid splash uh, towards the rats. I mean, if you wanted to, you could try to jump over them. This is a staircase, but yeah, that would but let's not falling a bunch of feet. All right, that'll be a dexterity save on their half. That is a seven. That's a failure. All right, three acid damage. All right, uh, Arthur, you watch as there's a splash of a familiar-looking red, and then a familiar sizzling sound as several of the rats are burned and disintegrated by sizzling acid that melts them down to spotted flesh and bits of bone. Corellian socks. Lillison? No response. I Oh, and and actually just something I've just realized. Um, we'll get to that next turn. Uh, but you can actually move through the swarm. They do have the swarm feature. They can be moved through. Okay. Would you like to do that uh, with your movement? I apologize for the mistake. No, I'll stay where I am for now. All right, very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Uh, Amity, are you still studying? Uh, yep. 
All right, Aerithrin Deer, what about you? Uh, well, seeing that Lillison's alive, he is going to start quite energetically blasting fire at these rats. All right, roll it. Still have plus two AC because of half cover. All right, that's a dirty 20 for two fire damage. All right, the damage is dealt. Several more of the rats go up in smoke and flame. And that's all. All right. Uh, I'm presuming Amity is still studying. Um, so with, well, actually, no, the rats have their turn. They're going to attack Lillison again. That is a 17 to hit. Okay, I will use my reaction to cast shield on myself. All right, the shield flies up, deflecting the rats. Several of them kind of splatter against it and then recoil, falling back down the stairs. Um, all right, that is the end of their turn. Lillison, you're up again. Okay, uh, as the shield disintegrates, um, how, like, does this swarm still look like it is, uh, like, still large and, and boisterous? Um, basically, like, how much damage? Yes. It doesn't look like they're, you've reduced their numbers by some amount, but not by a, a huge amount. Maybe 30% of the original rats are dead. Okay, um... No, nah, I won't risk it. Uh, I will... Ha. Huh. Alright, Lillison pushes her palm outwards, and this time instead of the, uh, the red splash of acid, um, a faint uh, mist of poison is going to drift out. So that will be another constitution save. Alright. And... As you watch, the gas, the poison, spits up from her hand and it twists in almost a skeletal face before devouring the swarm in its gaseous jaws. Uh, that's going to be a seven constitution. That's a failure. All right. That is seven poison damage. All right, you watch as a huge amount of rats suddenly drop dead, choking and coughing before settling still on the ground. You've easily reduced it by uh, half its numbers by this point. Okay. Uh, Lillison's going to smile grimly to herself, and that is my turn. All right, very good. Uh, next up, Amity's continuing to study, I presume. Aerith and Deer, you're up again. More fire! 23 to hit, 7 fire damage. That will certainly hit. More of the rats go up in fire and smoke as they're devoured by the greedy, crackling purple flame. They are going to desperately attempt to make another attack, unless there's anything else on your turn? No, that's me. All right, they're going to make another attempt at an attack against uh, Lillison. That's going to be a 10 to hit. That does not hit. You stamp out some of their heads, keeping them from getting even closer to you, and it's your turn once more. Okay, going to try the uh, poison again. All right. That is a six. All right, that's five poison damage. The last of the rats cough and twist and contort before collapsing dead and unmoving on the ground. Okay, Lillison's going to cautiously walk forward. Um, which, are, are there scythes, and if so, on which side? There are scythes to your left and to your right both blocking off the nursemaid suite and to the balcony. Ahead of you is just a blank, rotted, decaying wall. Okay. Lillison is going to look over at the unmoving forms of Kiva and Metreon, and her eyes narrow a little bit, but still saying nothing just yet. Um, she is going to ready herself to jump through the scythes. All right, as you do, you do see Amity gazing intently at the sides in front of you. Are you going to try to study them, or are you just going to jump right through on your next jump through on your next turn? I'm going to just jump right through. Does All it right, take an uh, action to jump through? Because I still no, have it's just, um, it's just movement. Yeah, I still have uh, twenty feet of movement. All right, make an acrobatics check. That is a fifteen. That's what the DC was. Hey. You plunge through, tumbling bringing up a single glint of magical deflection for a moment. You hear the sound of metal on force scraping and grinding, and Lillison tumbles free, standing tall, right by the banister. You're alive! She looks at Erythrindir, and she just nods once. 
And he looks almost worried to see her live. Um, <laughs> that, that, that means the house still, still has to kill someone. It's, it's the big thing following you. She shakes her head no. Okay, that's good. We're, uh... Oh my god, I, I didn't... We're plotting a way out. We're, uh... There's a bunch of poison down there, so, uh... Not sure we're getting through to the first floor throughout the smoke. But there is the balcony out here. Amity and I are trying to figure out the pattern of the blades, or figure out... Although, if you've got other solutions, then please, we need your brain right now. Wilson will think about that uh, while the others take their turns. All right. Amity is still studying. The others are still unconscious. If you'd like, you can wait until Amity completes her wait. Uh, Amity, can you make an intelligence check for me, please? Uh, yeah, bare intelligence. Got it. Um, that is going to be... 19. You stare intently for the remainder of the minute, sweat beating on your forehead and dripping down past your horns, and then you see it. A momentary gap in the pattern, a repeating movement that leaves open a space so that you could tumble through. You think you can take advantage of it and slide through without dam without taking damage. Do I think I could get these um, unconscious folks through also? They would probably be cut. Um, pulling them through? Uh... I would say you could probably carry one of them. Okay. I'm going to point out the pattern to the rest of the group. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it, not, it's not conveyable. You would have to, they would have to make their own checks. I see. I understand. But I, if you want, I can assume if, that you could just give them a good five minutes and just kind of take 20 on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell them that there is a pattern with a gap in it, at least. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's a question. Do you think we can get through the smoke and out to the balcony before it chokes us and kills them? They still gotta breathe. Okay. Littleson is going to finally say The window upstairs was bricked up. Is the door here even openable? That's a good point. Uh, we might need the toughest one of us to go in on a scouting run, see if we can actually, if this is even worth trying. So that'd probably be Amity or I. Um, all right, I, now that I've memorized the pattern, I can, I can go in and just see whether it's possible to get to the balcony. Yep, just to make sure you get out quick and be careful. Okay, Amity sets Truffle down and then dashes in uh, and goes over and sees presumably that this door also has scythe issues. Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, does the Otherwise, does the wall here also look cracked, uh, like possible to... No, the outer walls seem down? entirely uh, solid. Got it. And past the scythe, do I see the balcony and, and no mist? Like you do. The, the town? You can see the town okay. stretching out the dark roofs of the houses. You can hear drizzle falling outside. You can see a dark silhouette of a mountain's cliff rising on the outside. You're so close. I'm going to use the, the breath I have saved up to yell out onto the town. Somebody please help. There's a fire. Help. And then can't say anything else. I need to go back. And take a deep breath and inform everyone this another set of scythes I, we can get out if we get past them but I, I don't know if i can observe it's a different pattern great okay that's a all right so that that gives us information do you huh do you think we could bust through the wall to that bedroom so we can like watch the sides from this side or would that just let the smoke through um, which, which side? Oh, like, like having a, like a viewing window over to those sides. I, I don't know. The smoke's yeah, pretty thick. Like you can't I, see them except like from right next to them. Shoot, you're right. If we go downstairs, yeah. how many, um, how many sets of doorways are there? 
Well, I'm trying to think. We've got, there was the entryway, right? So you go down two sets of flights, and then there's the door to the entryway, and then the front door. Two. Same number. Same that. number. Yeah. So we're better off trying this, where it's a observed phenomena. But we do need a way to... If we carry these guys through the blades, they're going to get carved. Let's... Uh, let, let's destroy part of this wall. And then we only have the one. Point. All right. But be ready for anything. And Erythrindir is going to pull that pocket knife again and start tearing large. Actually, first... He is going to drag these guys over, drag the two bodies over here to where he is currently, in case of any more rat incursions or similar. And then he's going to start hacking at the wallpaper with his knife. All right, as you do so, this is the one leading to the bathroom? Uh, no. Like, right, right here. Gotcha. Um, as you do, you do notice that it is twisting and writhing, almost like the shapes of the rats that you saw on the wall the first time. Would you like to continue? Uh, everybody, y'all get in rat slaying position. And then he's um, gone. Also, a quick note, going off of memory, you would probably remember, uh, what's your intelligence? Uh, 14. Yeah, you would remember that that's the entrance to the closet. Or that's ah. the back of the closet. You need to go one square to the right to get up to the rest of the room. I will move one square to the right, because he is not stupid. And All right. Yeah, he's going to keep hacking away at it. Go for it. Okay. All right, uh, make, a, uh, make an attack roll for me. Uh, 12 with 5 damage. All right, and actually, I misread improvised weapons. They... This is this is not deal additional modifier, so you'll have to attack him a few more times. This is this is a knife. Hmm. Oh, you're using an actual dagger. I have a knife. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So how much damage? Uh, five. All right. You cut through entirely, cleaving the wake forward, and we're still on the old initiative. So with that, you slice through the wall. leaving the space forward toward the gas-filled room clear. You can just barely see the silhouettes at the sides leading forth still over the balcony. As you do, a swarm of rats pours forth, flooding the space and descending down onto the staircase where you stand. All right. All right. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. Or, All right. I, yeah, if that was an action, then yeah. Uh, yes, that was an action. Okay. Uh, with that, the rats will take their turn. They are going to attack you with their bite. As they pour out, spilling around you, uh, that's going to be a seven to hit. Nope. You duck, dodging back up the stairs, nimbly avoiding their bites as they pour up toward you. Uh, Lillison, you're up. Okay, Lillison will lean a little bit over the banister and uh, spray another mist of poison towards these rats. And she actually sighs a little bit um, in relief as she does so. So, con save, please. All right. That is a 10. All right, that is eight poison damage. All right, you watch as several of the rats drop dead, coughing and wheezing, unmoving. All right, uh, Amity, you're up next. Amity takes her pack out. Uh, using an arm to take out an entire armful of food and just flings it over the stairs, saying <laughs> to the rats, I, I know you're hungry, Th there's some food. It tastes a lot better than us, okay? The rats do not appear to bear any interest in the food. They keep swarming air from deer. Damn it. Okay, in that case, Amity's gonna cast um, Vicious Mockery, uh, taunting them by saying, what, so you're just going to live in, in, inside the walls? This whole place is going to burn down, you idiots. Uh, that's a wisdom save from them. All right. The rats can, in fact, hear you. They roll an eight on their wisdom save. 
And so, Lilith and Aethrandir, you hear once more as Amity's voice twists into a demonic, diabolic uh, sound. The words twisting until you can scarcely understand their words in common language anymore. And as you watch, a darkness slides over her eyes. The rats squealing in pain as you watch black blood beginning to run from their eyes and ears. Several, you can hear sounds of popping and screaming in pain as several of them keel over. You're the three blind mice and we're the butchers. Oh god, what just happened to them? Yeah, yeah, magic is uh, like that. Despite Arithandir's bravado, he looks very, he peeps looking at her like she's just grown an extra set of horns. Yeah, I mean, he backs up a little, <laughs> scared of what has just happened. It's, it's probably just the rats. They're, they're weird. They, they don't want the food anyway. All right, Arithandir, you're up. All right. He is going to grab his pocket knife again and just start seeing if he can stab individual rats, just doing his best to carve through them. All right. Uh, make an attack with your dagger. <laughs> Natural one. Unfortunately, the attack goes wide. Ah, oh, they're... I, oh, I hate this. Okay. And All right. The rats will attack you again. That's an eight to hit. Nope. All right, Lilson, you're up. Okay. Lilson will continue to send uh, sprays of poison at these things. So. That is a 12. All right, that's two poison damage. Beautiful. You watch two more rats drop dead. Next up is Amity. Okay. Um, Amity is going to, uh, again, uh, taunt them with vicious mockery, uh, going further into the, the three blind mice story. All right. It'll be another wisdom saving throw. That's a 17. Unfortunately, they seem fixated on their Rats. current target. Yes, correct. Uh, Arthur Deer, you're up. All right. More rat stabbing. Okay, 17. And that's four piercing that damage. All right. Slicing through them. You only cut a few rats. The swarm difficult to glance head on. They take half damage. But you do seem to have cut down their numbers to around half. All right. Keep it up. All right. They're going to take their action against you now. That is a 19 to hit. Yes. All right. That will be five points of piercing damage. Get them! Uh, get off of me! All right, Lilson, you're up. Okay. Uh, Lilson will continue to spray poison at them. Very good. That is a thirteen. Ah, that that meets it. All right, Amity, you're up again. Just get up the stairs. We spread oil on them earlier, right? The rats might slip. Um, and she again uh, casts a vicious mockery on them. I'm All gonna right. cut your tails off. That is a four. Sweet, they take three psychic damage. More of them fall to the ground, squealing and chittering in pain as the black bud and bile runs from their ears and eyes. Uh, Arthur Deer, you're up. He's gonna listen to Amity and disengage and back up a bit. And All right. That's all. The rats will take their turn, piling up, chasing after Aerith and Deer, smelling blood in the water. That is a 13 to hit. Uh, disadvantage, because vicious mockery. Ah, yes, thank you. Still 13. <laughs> then that hits. All right, it, uh, that will be... Yes? Is the oil on the stairs affecting them at all, like making them slip, or are they, uh, are they good? They seem to move at half speed across it, but it doesn't really seem to matter. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, that will be nine points of piercing damage. Oh... I am at one. Actually, Jeez. no, not that's the wrong number because they were bloodied. One second. Let me try that again. No, okay, it's only three points. Apologies. Oh, don't that's do that. That's on me to read the stat block, friends. No worries. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of the the rats. So Lillison, you're up. Okay. Lillison looks at Aerith Deer and she says, "Get behind me." 
And then she's going to uh, shove her uh, her hand out towards the rats, um, and this time uh, launch a ray of sickening energy. All right, this is with disadvantage because you're adjacent. All right. What's the uh, ultimate roll? Uh, The ultimate roll is a 15 to hit. All right, that will certainly hit. How much damage? That's nine poison damage. All right. With that, you watch as the jolt of sickening green energy tears through the air, spiraling through the smoke-tinged space, and then slamming like a bolt through the swarm of rats. All at once, they squeak and chitter and scream and then fall dead on the ground. Good. Very nice indeed. Uh, n- never mind. Don't get behind me. Let's just go. Yep, yeah. Hold on. We, uh, we gotta make sure we've given ourselves every advantage before we try this. This might just kill one of us dead on the spot. So yeah, now that the hole's open, can we see the balcony through the smoke, or is it too thick? It's it's too thick. You only know what Amity told you. If we illuminated it, could we see through it or not? We don't think so. The smoke is just choking up the entire space. I don't I don't like this. I, it's a, essentially gambling on us be, being able to get through those blades without getting carved into a fine little fish dish. I I have a little bit more of the, the heroism. I can I can use that magic a little bit more. It it's not much, but it might it might just give, give you just enough skin to get through. Then then do it. Who wants to go first? I'll go first, but you should give the heroism to him. Don't stop for you got this. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Um I so Lillison looks at the unconscious forms of Metreon and Kiva. Do either look like they like like she can actually carry their weight? What is your strength score? My strength is ten. Um how much do Metreon and Kiva weigh? Kiva uh, is 175 pounds. Uh, Metreon is only like 130. Um, you're not carrying much, so you could probably carry Metreon without being too uh, obstructed. Okay. Um, Lillison will hesitate for a long time, then she will stoop and just wait, very... Wait, wait. Before you go, I have one idea. It probably won't work. Just asking the DM, is, is it possible if I understand the pattern of the blades for me to use like a silent image in order to let other people understand where the gap is? No, it's the okay. intelligence check, and this is a mistake that I made in communicating earlier. It is a check you make every time you go through. You are replacing the acrobatics check with an intelligence check. Oh, I am. I apologize. Okay. I. Okay, so Lilson is going to. Um, after a long moment, stoop down and just very gingerly slide her hand under Metreon's shoulder, uh, trying not to touch his skin, uh, trying to, you know, hold on to the coat part as much as possible. All right, be able to lift him. And then she's going to turn and go through the hole in the wall. Go for it. You're greeted once more by the sound of scythes slashing and whirling in the space. But on the other side, beyond the choking dark smoke, you can see the balcony. Okay. Lillison is going to... Well, she's not going to take a deep breath because of the smoke in this room, but she is going to blink really hard, uh, tighten her grip on Metreon, and try to dash through. That is an eight acrobatics. That is a failure. You 
tumble through the other side, but you're slashed up and bloodied. You suffer 13 points of slashing damage. I am on the ground again. Lillison collapses unconscious on the ground. Earthinger, you don't hear anything, but you hear the sound of slashing flesh. Crap. Uh, and he casts I mean, heroism. you're up next. Oh. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, I cast heroism on uh, Earth and Deer. I'll, I'll be right after you. I'll, I can take Kiva. All right, but I, I think that hit her. We need to, we, we need to get them out of there. I, I don't know what to do. Just go and and you'll you'll get through, and then you can you can stop the bleeding. Okay. He's going to step back, close his eyes, and take a running start. All right, are you taking anyone with you? Or are you uh, leaving for Amity? I am going to grab Lillison if I can. If she uh, did, no, she did she already go? out. Oh, she, oh yeah. the, even if she failed, she got through. Correct. Then yeah, no, he, I'm leaving Kiva for Amity. And I am sprinting through. All right, make an acrobatics check. All right. And how many temper hit points does Amity give you? Three. Three. Very good. Okay, that's a 12. I am going to roll her Bardic Inspiration. Go for it. 14. I'm so sorry. The DC was 15. Uh... You tumble through the blades, slashing and tearing, and suffer eight points of slashing damage. <gasps> Heroism just saved my life! Oh, it's just a pile of bodies on this pile. <laughs> I was like, Amity's gonna have to start choosing who to uh, take medicine checks on soon. <laughs> oh. okay. And on that note, I believe you still have your action because you didn't have to dash to get here. Yeah. Um, uh, you do see Lillison bleeding out in the ground, Metreon unconscious yeah. beside her. He's gonna quickly, like, just tear at his robe, just tear at his robes, just kind of grabbing what he can from him, slash him with his knife, and then try and stem the bleeding. Make a medicine check. Five. She's losing too much blood. It's going fast. You don't think you can make it in time? Uh, with that... Oh, wait, Amity didn't actually go yet. No, uh, well, I cast some on, on Aerith Deer. Yes, but you just still had your movement if you'd like to move through. We'll rewind, or we'll just no, assume I... you're ready to action to dive through after Aerith Deer if you want. Uh, It's my fault. I forgot to ask you what your movement was. I see. I was just going to go after him. Um, okay, that's fine. We'll assume you're ready to yeah, action I'm... then. Like, I, I I have to dash because I'm taking Kiva, so I'm at half speed anyway. So I think I do have uh, my next turn. What's your strength mod score? 14? Yeah, 14. Uh, you can definitely carry her. You don't have a problem. Wow. Um, you are not encumbered. You are a small I, tiefling. Actually, I'm waiting for the next turn anyway, because um, uh, on my next turn, I am going to cast heroism on myself and then go through. So there there is a death save that it has right. to happen here. Very good. All good. Uh, in that case... Um, that is the end of Earth Reduce Turn, which means Lillison is not stable. I need a death save from her, please. Uh, I am sorry. I had advantage on that. That should actually be, uh... Let's roll again. Ace. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, we don't worry about that. All right, that's a 10. Ooh. Ooh. All right, uh, with that, uh, Amity, you're up. Okay, Amity casts Heroism on herself with the final spell slot and protecting Truffle in her arms and dragging Kiva along with her tail. She is going to take a deep breath before entering the smoke and roll through. All right, make an acrobatics check. All right, I want to point out, if I make it through this, it will have been a perfect run. No, I did not. That's you enough. Spoke to you. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you roll? Yeah, I rolled a one. That's a three total. I'm afraid not. Ooh, you take 18 points of slashing damage. Oh, wow. There's a shriek as I am just collapse bloody onto the balcony beside everyone else. All right. Uh, I believe 
Is Earthender the only one conscious right yes! now? Yes. yes. Yes, he is. All right. I'm gonna Fun. I'm gonna force you to do this because I'm cruel. Uh, so Amity just plunged through. She's unconscious and bleeding out. Uh, Amity and uh, Lilithin, or sorry, Amity and no, yes, Amity and Lilithin are both unconscious and bleeding out. The other two seem stable but are still unconscious. You're the only one with any awareness right now whatsoever. What are you doing, Desmond dear? Uh, well, you're it, out on the balcony. At first thing he does is probably get bowled over as as Amity passes through, but then he just kind of looks at the pile of unconscious bodies, looks around, looks at Lillison, looks at Amity, and muttering a little prayer for the first time in about 45 years, he's going to try and staunch Amity's bleeding. All right, make a medicine Thank check. You. Fuck off. Oh, wait, Jack of all trades. That's a 10. Woo. Nice. Amity is stable. Uh, Lilithan, I need you to make another death save. That is a five. All right. Uh, that's one success, one failure. Aerithrin, dear, I need you to make another medicine save on to listen. If he wants to. I kind of <laughs> I I do. Old kicker. Eight. Lilithan, I need you to make one more death save for me, please. Fourteen. Two successes, one failure. Oh, God. Go ahead, Aerithrin, dear. She's running out of blood. Oh, Fifteen. Yes! You wrap the bandage around her head, finally manage to staunch the bleeding from a tourniquet around her arm. You pause for a moment. Her flesh is so cold, it's so clammy, she's shaking, she's trembling. The chills are all throughout her body. You feel like you're losing her. And then her breathing stabilizes, and the bleeding stops. And slowly, you allow yourself to breathe once more. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is where we will end for today. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hashtag pile of bodies, gang. Let's go. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the, Let the bodies uh, hit the floor. Let the bodies. bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies. So yeah, everyone is unconscious. Deer is at two HP. That clutch heroism, man. <laughs> Amity wow. will never know that you you chose her first. But... Fortunately, never will it, nor will Lillison. <laughs> well, I mean, it's okay. Aerithrin <laughs> doesn't play favorites. Mm, he does a little. Hey, what if Truffle saw the whole that. thing? Yeah. Oh wait, it's it's it's, it's Aerithrin Deer and Truffle. Oh my God, Truffle did see the whole thing. Yes, yes Truffle. We can ask. Him. Sweet, sweet Truffle. He's so traumatized by all of this now. Yeah. Wow. So we we just got the pile of bodies, one elf and one pig. So are we taking a long rest here, boys? Or <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to nap, I think. You know, a yeah, ten foot balcony here. with five people on it sounds like yeah. a great cuddle puddle. It's, it's drizzling outside, you know. Oh god, but it's I forgot air. my phone. We have to go back in. <laughs> Seltzer almost just came out of my nose when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly was I a second. How did we live that? Well, we didn't, but some of us. How did we live that? Sorry, this was Jack? a. Oh my god. How y'all feeling? Good times. Um, <laughs> I uh. Good to be alive. I need to... I don't know what I need. I think what we need is to uh, take a look at the Deadpool results. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give me one moment and I'll pull those up. While she does that, uh, pl another plug for Twice Bitten After Dark this Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, where we'll be in depth uh, freaking out over the results of this episode. Or at least they will. I won't be. I'm enjoying their pain. Uh, and talking about Curse of Strahd game design and such. So again, this channel, uh, twitch.tv slash rcurseofstrahd, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, this coming Monday. Be there or be square.
Come on, can't you two like just a little bit of freaking out to keep us company? <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. Oh. The great thing is, uh, now we've got to figure out how to get down. <laughs> <laughs> it's still hot, yeah, though. right? You're just oh. going to sort of push us over. And just roll us off the edge. Yeah. You still miles. have that edge sheet rope still there, right? Like, oh, it was it top. It is. True. It yeah. is still there. Probably. Oh, but wait, the wa the window that we went in through, through is yeah. still shut. So. I've got fishing line. That would definitely work. <laughs> Sir, do we level there up? Were, there were seven. Oh, yeah. Y'all reached level three. Congratulations. Hey! <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know if we've earned it, but uh, I'll take we, it. I think we did. We lived. I, I don't know about you, but I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all did. All right, uh, Serena, and like with the Deadpool? I'm still, unfortunately, Google doesn't have a way to like lay it out so that I can just see who submitted one thing. So I have to go through all of these results. No so worries. Give me, we'll like, talk about it moment. on. Yeah. We can talk about yeah. it after dark if you want. That would be great. So we'll do the announcement on after dark. But for those of you, obviously, who had Lillison, congratulations. You'll get a shout out on the after dark stream. Yeah. We'll be happy to see you all there. Also, thanks for coming out. This was a very, very fun one. Yes, all thank right. everybody so much for watching. Thank yep, you. We love y'all. Um, and I'm gonna go like down that's now. All today. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, we love you all, uh, and we will see you all back in the mists next Saturday. Uh, until then, beware of collapsing houses, and be warier of any sides that you might see, and take care.